welcome to yet another Analog Livestream. As always, I'm your host, Sigma, and with me tonight, I currently have Son of Ifrit. Say hi, you schmuckhead. Of course, he's decided to make me look like I'm just a complete nutter. Okay, well. Sorry, wrong button. <sighs> Quite the auspicious start to the evening. Well, uh, anyway, we're gonna have we're gonna have Wind Ninja on, or we're gonna have Gale Force three one nine two on with us in a little bit here. Uh, we're just waiting on her Discord to unfuck itself. You know how it do. <sighs> so in the meantime, I guess we'd best get to the news, and unfortunately, it's not very good news this week. I mean, I guess one could argue it never really is, but well. Uh, let me just put it this way. Under normal circumstances, when we're deciding on what we want to do for the news, uh, my personal ethos with this sort of thing is basically avoid, avoid the bullshit, I guess is the best way to, to say it, which is just avoid the obligatory uh, just generally avoiding the obligatory crap that you get in every newspaper, you know? No sports, no human interest bit. Well, no sports, unless they're funny. No human interest bits, again, unless they're funny. And no obituaries, because those are never funny. Uh, this week, though, we're going to be breaking that last rule, because... Well... Somebody died recently, and they weren't anybody famous, but... They were somebody who I think this particular group owes a lot to. <sighs> so, uh, let's get into this. Without showing the actual stream, please. What the... Yikes. <sighs> Trying to be solemn and professional here. And I'm constantly fucking it up. Because of course I am. It's me. What do you expect? Are you? Shut up. Okay, so this is Emerson Emmer Prevost. Prevost? Prevost? Never could quite figure Prevost. out Never could quite figure out how his last name was pronounced. Doesn't really matter. Uh that was his name, but to those of us online, he was always Helsing nine twenty. Or, in the case of just keep that in mind, Elmer. Hey, Elmer, can you do a rant about sponges? You think we're kidding about that? I'm pretty sure he actually used that line. Hey, Elmer, can you do a rant about, about the flower industry? Oh, it's a, just a piece of shit. He didn't use that one, though. <laughs> uh, anyway. Now... Those of you who are watching, all... None of you? <laughs> uh, probably have no idea who we're talking about. And... That's actually kind of understandable, because all things considered... Housing920, even at the height of his popularity, was a very small-time YouTuber. Like, I think... Well, you know, I think it's time for a little bit of backstory here. So, the reason Ifrit, Wendy, and I know Helsing920, uh, it actually goes all the way back to, what, 2008, 2009? Somewhere in there? 2007, 2008, for me, I think. Yeah, probably when we would have first run across him, yeah. Well, roundabouts in there. Um, he was kind of part of this... It wasn't quite a network, but it was a group of a whole bunch of different YouTubers who did a whole bunch of different collaborative works together. They were kind of, you know, this ragtag group of fans, and not entirely unlike what the Analog Kids are now, albeit with... I can't decide if they were more organized or less organized, if I'm honest, but... Ah, maybe it's a tad more organized than us. Maybe. But we're, we're talking, like, real old school YouTube personalities and largely it and this was back when YouTube was kind of a small 
it was still a growing website. You didn't really have too many big names. Uh, so even if you had a small name, you general it was still, you know, a name. You know, you still had a fan base. And these guys, you know, these, these guys would, these guys had like a devoted following of a few hundred, a few thousand, even up to into like 10,000-ish. Uh, maybe, sort of, maybe just had more than that, I don't know. You know, it, it was a reasonable handful of subscribers, and, you know, unlike these days where you, you're lucky to see, like, 30% returns on how many subscribers you have versus how many views you get when your video first drops, uh, back in the day, it was pretty much one-to-one. -one. Like, you could pretty much expect any subscriber you had would probably catch whatever new video you put up relatively quickly. Probably because it wasn't getting buried under a whole bunch of other shit. It was before the time that YouTube was kind of going down the toilet. Well, I mean, it was before YouTube. It was before YouTube was bought out by Google, basically. True, but even even before, even after they got bought out by Google, it wasn't as bad as it was now. Yeah, it's been a steady downward spiral. Oh, good. Wendy's Discord has finally unfucked itself. She should be on in a bit. That's uh. That's helpful. And that reminds me, I need to switch my online status to Do Not Disturb so we don't keep getting those little... Hey, Wendy. Hello. Oh, there she is. Hey, Wendy. Yes, finally! We're, we're talking about Emmer. Yeah, I had a feeling. I remember saying you were gonna, you were gonna talk about that before we actually started. Yeah. So... You know, we're, we're kind of going up. So, you know, back in the good old days of YouTube, 07, 08, 09, is kind of when we came across Emmer and a whole bunch of other YouTubers who kind of associated with him to varying degrees. Just keep that in mind, who occasionally shows up in our, uh, in our stream chat to bother me, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, he was definitely one of those people. Uh, random DCE, who you might have heard of, probably not though. Uh, Big Al Two K Six, Boomstick Five Four Five, uh, Lily Livers, always a big one. That one. She's, by the way, I don't know if any of you have heard of her about her recent work, but she's actually getting professional voice acting work now, which is really cool. Really? Yeah. Nice. Actually, getting work in. Uh, She's actually done voice work for a few different video games now. Holy shit. Kind of biggish ones, too. Like, huh. it, it's not, we're not quite on the level of, say, Phantom Savage doing voice work for Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> wow. I'm never gonna let him live that down. <laughs> but she's, it, it, it's, she's done some work and... It, some of it's been for stuff that's actually taken off pretty well. It's progress. Like, like, to the point that she's actually getting recognized by her voice in public. Wow! Right? Holy shit! Of course, uh... Everybody else will probably just know her as the person who did the screams for the, uh, woman... Who... For the, uh, woman who was part of that couple on the moped in Happy Wheels. <laughs> yeah, that was her. <laughs> yeah, see, I just see, I just love the fact that I managed to get away with using a clip from one of her, from like that one commentary she made. <laughs> yes. yes, it's like a fucking e war. We're getting e shrapnel on our e asses. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was Lily Livers, but y you kind of get the idea. It was a big. It was a fairly extensive roster of all these different YouTubers who were relatively successful and did a lot of collaborative work together. Like that, various different people would show up for would show up out of this group to do voice work in a lot of random DCEs, uh, you know, sprite-based uh, things, and you know, he'd actually make like sprites specifically of them and whatnot, just for com just for comedy's sake. Terrison still hasn't lived... Terrison still hasn't, uh... Terrison still occasionally gets bothered by the whole Oingo Boingo little girls thing. <laughs> be 
Because of course he does. Also sheep. I mean, he's Welsh. Because he's Welsh. <laughs> yes, indeed. But, um... Yeah, Ember was definitely a, a big part of that group, and that's not a fat joke. Um... He was, uh, he really was, like, you know, very much part of that whole experience, such that when, in about 2008, 09, somewhere in there, when, uh, there was this massive rash of, uh, false DMCA claims and account closures associated with it, which turned out to be the work of a hacker, um, during that time, he actually set up a safe haven for all of these, uh, all of these YouTubers who suddenly found themselves kicked out of their own platform for no good reason. Uh, he created a website called Wingerdinger, which is unfortunately now defunct. It was actually targeted and taken down by the same hacker. But while it existed, it was both a video sharing site that, uh, both video sharing site that where you could embed through uh, through Blip, uh, through YouTube, and through various other smaller video sharing systems, uh, and basically they would, and basically everybody just set up a Blip account, and for the better for the better part of a year, they that's how they kind of kept what was left of their YouTube career going uh, until that site went down, and then a whole bunch of other shit happened, and in the ensuing insanity, most of them managed to actually get their YouTube channels back, which is great. Uh... Yeah, the fuck was that? I said, hey, Big Mac, we got some viewer. What's this about Big Mac? We got a viewer, look. We, we oh. got a viewer named Big Mac. Oh, so we do. I can't actually look at... There's a bit of a problem with how I'm currently running this particular uh, screen, and that's that I can't actually look at the yeah, I can't actually look at the stream page. Oops. Well, anyway, uh, so he was a big part of kind of helping to keep that sort of weird little ragtag group of B. I don't, honestly, even B-list is a bit of a stretch. But just kind of keeping this ragtag group of sort of cult favorite YouTubers up and running. You know, outside of YouTube. Which was extremely important to them, and as it turns out, also extremely important for us. Because at the time, all of us were fans of at least some of the people who were in this in this particular group. You know. Uh, Darkness the, you know, Darkness the Curse, Tian Pan, all them. Again, this was a big, big group. <laughs> Fairly decent group. Yeah. Some still active today, some long since gone from the, uh, from the YouTubes. Gone from YouTube. Yes. And because all of us were fans of these people... We all kind of ended up migrating over to Wingerdinger. Now, prior to that, I didn't know any of these guys from Adam. I had no idea that Windy or Ifrit or Parsi even existed. But uh, we all ended up meeting on the forum, ended up hitting <laughs> on a really nerdy, stupid RP thread, because of course... We were teenagers. We were teenagers at the time. We we all cringe. We all have cringe moments. Yeah, I mean, you know, it kind of helped develop a certain level of something or another for our D and D experience, I guess. Maybe sort of. Possibly. I mean, it developed some like storytelling stuff overall, but yeah. There we go. So, yeah, that's kind of how. The four of us, myself, Wendy, Ifrit, and Parsi, that's how we all came to know each other. And that's kind of how this particular group sort of came into fruition. 
so in a way really without without emmer we never would have had the analog kits and i i feel like it's worth mentioning i personally do not like despite owing that level you know despite owing that particular part of my life to emmer in a way i i wouldn't say i really liked the guy uh especially in the last year or so before his death year two years uh, he just kind of i want to i almost want to say kind of let his ego get away from himself because oh, oh most of what he does is um the vast majority of what he does is like movie reviews and occasionally just kind of ranting on about various different topics back in the day he was almost exclusively a ranter but you know more recently he kind of became known for his reaction and review series where he'd just watch him you know where he'd just watch a movie or something uh give a few quick clips of his hot takes as he was watching it and then at the end give kind of a more kind of overall review uh of what he just watched it was an interesting it, it was an interesting format very low maintenance uh very easy to come up you know very easy to set up and do and I'll, I won't deny, he did make it work pretty well. Like, it, it suited his style quite nicely. That's not the issue I took with him. The issue I primarily took with him was one of what I can only describe as unfathomable hypocrisy. Uh, and if, if you all remember, like, a year or two years ago, uh, Doug Walker from Channel Awesome kind of made this big to-do about several of the videos on his site, uh, both by him and by his, uh, affiliates, had been taken down according- had been taken down by false DMCA claims, both on the site and on- both on his site and on YouTube. And... Emmer's response to- and, well, Doug basically created this entire movement around- around that issue, because it was a much bigger issue than him, uh, which kind of became the Twitter hashtag WTFU, where's the fair use, not wake the fuck up, although, wake the fuck up, sheeple, uh, but yeah, <laughs> no, the, the, the entire point of it was essentially a movement to A movement to really kind of put the onus of defending the Digital Millennium Copyright Act on these, you know, massive websites and the networks that they operated in so that users didn't have to worry about this sort of reprisal from big uh, entertainment and telecommunication companies that, you know, if you said anything... Because it, it had kind of gotten to the point where pretty much if he said anything critical about the stuff they were doing, they would just flag it as a false DMCA thing. Or if they wanted to just make a bit of extra money off you, they'd falsely flag something as a DMCA claim on you as a DMCA issue on YouTube. They'd receive the ad revenue from that video for about a month, and then they'd just drop it. And that that actually is still an ongoing thing, from what I understand. Um, you'll occasionally hear about things like this from you know, kind of other major YouTubers who kind of are, are more hard news. Like the Jimquisition, for example, has spoken about that at length. And if all of this sounds familiar, it's only because that's exactly what Emmer and a lot of the other people who migrated over to Wingerdinger went through back in 08. That was 2008-2009 for that specific group. It's happened with several other channels during that time too i remember uh what was his name west side steve i think his name was he dealt with that a lot uh yeah um, other channel i used to i used to watch uh dark scream 217 he got oh yeah yeah he was another one yeah he got flat he got his account flag and suspended because uh it's the start where every other time i started making commentaries uh when someone made about like 40 uh, other bot, other fake accounts just to flag uh, several of his videos to get them removed off YouTube. Yeah, that that was kind of 
like that 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 was very much the same sort of thing as what where's the fair use but on a smaller scale because well it was a smaller site back then so you know doug makes this big impassioned vid impassioned video i think he made actually like two or three videos about the whole thing and it was two like i remember the first one and then and after and then like an after video just talk about what happened after the event so and all that yeah so he makes all this and emmer emmer prevost helsing 920 the man who had to build an entire website because of exactly this issue basically responded with oh bitch please you know his response essentially boiled down to you have no right to comp you have no right to complain because you're an overrated sack of shit who doesn't make very good videos yeah, so base so his reason for bitching is basically because it's a channel awesome member complaining about this. Pretty much, yes. It's he he has a history of just hating a majority of the channel awesome people. Yeah, this this basically this is this is basically my reason for my falling out with with Emmer and his work years before. Because like I remember because I remember like Sigma and I talk talking about this because Sigma mentioned that his reason for his fallout with with Emmer was his hypocrisy over the fair use thing, but my reason for my falling out with Emmer and his work was his complaining about uh, about that guy with the glasses and Channel Awesome years before, where his like if I remember correctly, he basically said it's like oh anybody who likes that guy with the glasses and Channel Awesome is a fucking idiot. And keep in mind this was years before Channel Awesome's downward spiral, which I mean, uh, I mean, I, which eh, uh, I, I'd almost argue it was kind of on the cusp of that. Yeah, but, I mean, like, like it was he, it was on the it was on the peak before Channel Awesome spiral from last I remember. Yeah. Dude had an axe I mean, to grind. But even with, so, uh, with even awesome. with Channel Awesome's downward spiral, if you like Channel Awesome, or even just a s certain people from Channel Awesome, that's fine. Yeah. Unless unless you're someone like him, in which case suddenly, oh no, it's not fine. Like, yeah. Uh, he really did take his own opinion on the matter way too seriously. You know, j on top of really kind of needlessly hating the whole thing to the point of not even really being able to empathize when they're going through the exact same shit that he did a long time ago. But, like, you know, those are those are big faults that he had. He was something of a contrarian in a lot of regards, and uh, sometimes his own e and really sometimes his own ego and his own biases did kind of cloud his judgment, but... Yeah, it's like, and he seems to be very, very opinionated. And this is coming oh, from was, someone. Yes. And this is coming oh, from someone who, I'll admit, I could be an opinionated person, but he, he even makes someone like me, but he makes someone like me go, like, dude, dial it back a little. Well, a lot of the time it was to the degree that he just straight up did not recognize other people's opinions as at all valid, no matter how well reasoned they were. And, like, I get it. You don't need to respect... You need to respect people, but you don't need to respect their opinions. He wouldn't even respect people, mostly for their opinions. And that, that that's another part of kind of what caused the big falling out between him and myself. But I don't want to focus on this stuff too much, because, yeah, we could talk about that all night until the cows come home, and about how he, about how he fell out with both Just Keep That In Mind and Ace Alieri. Uh, for exactly that issue, but yeah, it's like I and did not I think come he, here to bury Caesar. He, he, I came here to praise him, or yeah. at least eulogize him. Yeah, because for all his faults, he did have he did have a good side to him. He yeah, he really did. He really did. Like when he cared, he cared passionately, and you could tell that just. You could tell that not from what he said, but from what he did. He would go to the trouble of... He all too frequently, you know, went to the trouble of ensuring, you know, people, the people close to him were, you know, looked after to a degree, I suppose. That's why he set up Winger Dinger. That's 
why he regularly attend meetups with uh, all the people that he kind of, you know, was friends with and worked with. That's been, that was always a big part of, that was always a big part of Prevost's ethos. And that was one thing that I could really praise him for. There was a certain degree of loyalty there, at least when his own ego wasn't getting in the way. But, <sighs> really, it's just, he passed away on August 6th from complications due to a hernia. As you can tell from the photo, he was a bit of a bigger guy. Um, actually, looking at him now, it looking at him now, it 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 it, 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 all, it honestly kind of surprises me. He sort of did look a bit like kind of early career Gabriel Iglesias. He he. he... To give it, to give a good perspective, he's kind of in the he kind of the same like body mass as Boogie. Kind of sort of. In fact, in fact, um, those of you who follow Boogie would know uh, Boogie suffered from a similar medical issue. Jeez, uh, not even a year ago, I don't think. Um, and he actually went in. He actually went in and had that surgically corrected, and it was a dangerous surgery that he openly admitted left a good chance of him dying on the table. Uh, unfortunately, while Emmer had gotten that same operation scheduled to get it corrected for himself, he never made it. So, so Boogie did make it, Emmer did not. Yeah. Basically. Ugh. That's pretty much just what happened. And Jeez. It's kind of why I, I I don't like sugar, and the whole reason we're talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly of, of Emmer tonight is, even when somebody dies, I don't really feel like sugarcoating who they were. Like when when I heard she, like when I heard Shed, Sheldon Adelson was dead, you know, former uh, president of Fox News, I and you know, well known womanizer, I I didn't celebrate his death, but. I was rather glad that, at the very least, he would no longer be tainting the American news media. Granted, we've got plenty of people to take his place, but... Eh, details. It's... kind of an equal and opposite sort of situation with Ember here, because I think him... I, I think it really took his untimely death to make me realize really just how much I... just how much I and we as a group owe to him. Like, I can't stress this enough. Without the Winger Dinger Forum, there would be no Analog Kids. And without Helsing 920, there would be no Winger Dinger. And sure, maybe one of the other YouTubers he was friends with might have set up something similar. In fact, a fan of his tried to set up a backup Winger Dinger Forum after the first one crumbled, and that lasted about a week. Before it. A week? I think it lasts a long way up. I think it lasts like a few days, didn't it? <laughs> uh, maybe I'm giving him too much credit now. But yeah, it, it kind of got targeted by the same hacker and went down almost as quickly as it went up. Um, but you get. But the point is, we don't know what would have happened if somebody. We don't know what would have happened if, em, if Emmer hadn't stepped up and made that site. Maybe somebody else would have, maybe not. Point is, he's the one who did, and we owe him at least that much. So, here's to you, big guy. Wherever you are, I hope they're showing reruns of the Golden Girls. <laughs> what? He was a fan. I know. This <laughs> I still remember the <laughs> unboxing videos they he usually did with uh, just keep with uh, just keep, keep that mind and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Ghost. <laughs> that, was a, that was another really funny thing. Um, for those of you who don't know, just keep that in mind. He has a habit of sending things to his friends. These things, very weird things. These things. Well, not just to his friends. In fact, he has also sent things to Brad Jones. I think, as we've uh, mentioned before. Yeah, he's yeah. He said very weird things to yeah the cinema snob of all people. Yeah, 
uh, the two that stand out for the cinema stob are a copy of gay po- of the gay porn Boys Gone Wild. Yeah, and, Guys Gone Wild. And feces! <laughs> and feces! <laughs> everything's, everything's covered in feces! There's no place to take a feces! Everything went to shit! It was devastating! <laughs> uh, sorry, Spoonie. But yeah, the... The few, the few gifts that I remember would be the, uh... The toilet? Oh, is it the first season? The... <laughs> oh, the, oh, the, oh, the, oh, the, God, the toilet! To think of how to bring up the toilet! <laughs> Just keep that in mind. Was... Send Emma a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the Let's first see, time Emma had toilet. to... That was the first time ever Emma... <laughs> that was the first time Emma had to send something that David sent him back! <laughs> Let's see, there was... There was the toilet... Uh, I think there was a broken Furby. Probably, multiple copies. Of like he sent him, he's multiple DVD box sets of the Golden Girls. Multiple DVD box sets of Celebrity Family Feud. <laughs> I think it was like fifteen copies. Which I, you know, there are worse things to get in the mail. Um, especially when he, especially when he was a fan of the show, so it actually worked in his favor. Yeah. Yeah. It's a funny thing with just uh, that- Sam Wow. Uh. I, I think he sent him some kind of live insects. Because I do remember he sent Big Al 2K6 bees. No, yeah, that was Ladybugs. I thought he sent the Ladybugs to Emmer. No, he sent, the, he sent Ladybugs to Big Al. Because he, he was complaining about, It's winter! What am I going to do with Ladybugs? <laughs> Yeah, and then he just then he just opened the bag and put them no, outside. Like, okay, I was, uh, I'm, or, hope you like no, dying. Maybe it was me. I... I think it was either Ace Alieri or Samuel DeGee, because it was somebody in that uh, call with Magus that brought up the that brought up Ladybugs. I, I, I know, I know he sent bees to somebody. It might have been Emmer. Bees. And there's also you know, Ghost now on think, Betamax. See, now I'm thinking of that uh, video that of that uh, video of that. Uh, Megas X One video that I just saw a while ago. Because now I'm thinking of how Ace Alieri talked about how. Of how just keep that in mind sent him six DVDs of the of the Green Lantern movie and how he's stuck with those movies not knowing what to do with them because oh, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> so yeah, he, he, Emmer was a good sport about the whole thing though. You know, he took it very much in stride. I think it helped that at least a couple of the things were things he actually liked. Uh, but that, that, that was just kind of the kind of person Emmer was in a lot of regards. He was, he was not a laid back person necessarily, but he, he could take a joke and that's good because if you take yourself too seriously and, you know, just keep that in mind, you're probably going to get into, you're going to, you're probably going to end up going completely insane. Basically, I mean, if you if you see the rants that he's done over the years, <laughs> if you, or indeed any videos he's done over the years, is it his exploration through Dollar Tree? <laughs> yes. The, the 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 rants where he actually dressed up as Sigma. <laughs> I'm still scarred by that. <laughs> 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 and like, everything like I said, since if, like I said, sucks. If it, like I said, if you take, if you take, if you can't take a joke, and you know J.K. Tim, you're gonna go nuts. Lucky for me, I was already there. <sighs> so, I think that's really all that can be said at the moment about Emmer. Uh, there were a lot of people who knew him. Much closer than we did. Um, Ace Alieri, I know, did a did a did a half hour live stream talking about all this, and I highly recommend actually that you guys go and have a look at that because Ace yeah. Alieri was a lot closer to Emmer than we were, and yeah. I think a lot of the things that he had to say were. Yeah, and I, and I remember watching the the video that he was in, like with us, where he was in a Skype call with Megasex One, where he was, he was talking about that he was thinking about doing a video 
as part of a video tribute where he's thinking about doing a reaction and review in tribute to in tribute to Emma, and I kind of hope he does. Yeah, the uh, yeah, I might steal that. It was uh, Magus X One, Samuel to Geek, Samuel to Geek, Prince of Moose, Ace Prince of Moose, Ace and JK Tim, yes. Prince of Moose, and a name I haven't heard in a there's a name I haven't heard in a while. I'd also recommend also checking out Big Al Two K Six's recent video. He was he he's doing he did a rant over this whole debacle with uh, that one daddy dating dating sim whatever it's called dream daddy what dream i daddy? think i think I yeah think dream daddy, dream well, the daddy. Made. yeah and uh he did it in the style of helsing's old rants <laughs> yeah i i haven't watched it yet but i noticed he posted a new video so i gotta get to that oh hi slayer huh hi slayer Evening, Slayer. Not your sex life. <laughs> I noticed the way he spelled high. Apparently, his sex life is high. <laughs> Weed sex. Hi. Did someone say hi? I can't go out with it. I can't go out with it. I'm American. I'm an American. I love this country. My country. And on that bombshell, I think it's time we uh, ended this particular news segment. All right, goodbye, everybody. Ah! God damn it, Ifrit! I swear to God, I don't get paid enough for this shit. Yeah, it's like, and I and and I had something else that I wanted to talk about, but given the given the stuff that happened, I'm not sure if that was a good time. It... I I remember telling you about this Sigma, but uh, yeah. I know what you're talking about, and I hate to tell you, but outside of the commentary community, that isn't news. Yeah, I had a feeling. And despite the fact that... Despite the fact that you, as one of our... As one of our hosts, is a member of the commentary community, and Slayer, our only... And Slayer, who's basically our only regular viewer... Um... Is also a member of the commentary community. Despite that, I want to make this clear: this stream is not affiliated with the commentary community at large. Members of the stream are friends with members of the commentary community, if not directly a part of the community itself. But by and large, I can see myself. In, I can see myself in exile. And then, of course, there's the hermit over here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Ifrit. Nice to see you're back. <laughs> hey, hey, everybody. My name's not Ifrit. My name is uh, Herman. That's a hermit. I thought it was going to be Herman the Hermit. That works too. Yeah. <sighs> so, yeah. Despite the, so, yeah, despite any similarities you might see in format, and despite the faces and names that show up here on occasion, we are kind of a separate and distinct entity. Although, you know, that being said, it's not like we it's not like we dislike the commentary community as a whole. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Hey Ryan, how's your Chipotle? <laughs> I think he hated. it. Ah my Chipotle <laughs> Uh that is an in joke. Hey Hobbs, how's your face? Not really sure how to respond to that. I think it would be cool to have Hobbs on as a guest star at some point, though. That that'd be cool. Hobbs is a cool dude. I like him. Him smart. So anyway, <sighs> on to the uh, main event, as it were. What the fuck? What what the fuck? <laughs> Methinks Slayer. Maybe. Oh boy! Methinks... I can't wait to commentate on some Dodongos. I d <laughs> okay. Who's trolling us? It has to be Slayer. It's always Slayer. Unless it's Big Mac, in which case, what? 
Big Macintosh, what are you doing? Stop it! Nope. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no! Oh. Yeah, it's Slayer. What happened? If it, what did you do? I'm sorry, but I found a I found a, a news piece just at the very last minute. Oh, oh God Jesus damn it. Christ. New Jersey, New Jersey man who allegedly masturbated during a Moji movie turns himself into police. Oh yeah, the, we actually don't need to cover that. Oh that yeah, on, I've seen what I the, heard about this. That was on What the Fuck is Wrong with You last night. Yep. I'm waking the weird shit, Sigma. <laughs> I'm not from New Jersey. You sound like it. Hey. I do not. I'm too redneck. <laughs> You're too redneck? I mean, pretty much anybody from Cincinnati is essentially diet redneck, so... Yeah, well, like, you're diet yeah, redneck. You're like... full-blooded redneck. Yeah, it's like heavy... You... That's it's still like too Cincinnati redneck for Jersey. Close to the, sub to the southern Ohio border next to Kentucky. So, yeah, Cincinnati basically is... <laughs> redneck diet. I can, from my backyard, spit into Kentucky. <laughs> Sometimes I do that just because I don't like Mitch McConnell very much. <laughs> that's no that's no reason to, to take your hate on Mitch McConnell out on Kentucky. It's a beautiful landscape. <laughs> I mean, it looks like Ohio I mean honestly it looks like Southern Ohio, but with more trailers. I'm sorry, oh. but ever since, but ever since you you mentioned the name Mitch McConnell, I just laughed my ass off. I have, I I've watched to be in too, the too club. much last week tonight with John Oliver because I've got that old white wrinkled dicks like seg like it like segment. I'm sorry that that's old white wrinkled what now? Oh, <laughs> god damn Next. it! Next, next, wrinkled dicks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I knew what you were, I knew what you were doing. Never underestimate the power of the soundboard. Exactly. <laughs> I don't need to hear it. Uh I can't hear it because I had the stream muted, but I knew you were playing it. <laughs> uh I have dedicated my life to making Mitch McConnell a sad, angry turtle. <laughs> Not that he doesn't do that perfectly well on his own. So, though that's that's a bit of shenanigans that we had out of that we had, and now it's time to get into the meat of the matter. You're eating yes. your vegetables. Now it's time for the meat. How can you have your pudding if you don't eat your meats? It's time for the Confederate Confederate flag roll. So, we just rapid fire went from Mr. We we just rapid fire went from regular car reviews to Pink Floyd to whatever the hell that was. If it... yeah, I don't know what, what that was. Either. What the Confederate flag flag roll? Yeah, it's the, it's from the shus the shusiji shusi shusiji product test. Whatever the fuck that is. All right, glove and boots. Yes. I forgot oh! about the sushi bazooka. Yeah, they Turned they made a bazooka. <laughs> they made a uh, <clears throat> this Confederate flag roll. It was uh, what was it? Uh, pulled pork uh, mixed with uh, chicken skin, and pork rinds with barbecue sauce and dipping sauce. Which you know, as far as redneck sushi goes, I think that's not a bad idea. Might give that a go sometime. If I remember correctly, they quite liked it as well. So, I mean, it's it's better than sushi, sushi skittles. The sushi, the skittle sushi was a bit of a bad idea. Yeah. Skittles. You don't remember that they did sushi skittles as well. I don't think she watches the boots. Oh. Not that often, no. Well, you should. They're hilarious. Go if you, if you haven't subscribed to Glove and Boots yet, please do. You, you'll find yourself... Yeah, saying, I really should. I need to fix that. Yeah. Go do that, go subscribe, because you'll find yourself saying... I love... <laughs> uh, 
I really can't wait to actually get voice meter banana back in here so you guys can actually hear when I use the soundboard. I really want to try and pull it. Just keep that in mind with glove and boots and just send them some random shit. Oh my god. That's oh my a, god. That sounds like such a bad idea. Let's do it. <laughs> Sushi is best when it's made from ingredients from cars. Kashow! That sounds so awful. So anyway, Twilight. No, fuck Twilight. Why does it keep, keep talking about cars? Don't fuck Twilight! What? <laughs> She's a princess. Goddamn clubbers. Did you really go there? He really went there. I had to. You, you, you set it up. I had to. No! God damn it! Uh, I, and now all I can think of is... Just grab him in the biscuit. You, you just keep giving me excuses. Keep it up. Anyway. Really, though. Twilight. Um, so, last time, what happened? Um, nothing? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! Stupid! Stupid! You're so You're stupid! stupid! Hi, Weird Al. I dare to be stupid. Let's see. Uh, oh, right. Last time we learned that um, Carlisle has the power of being very, very sensitive. Wow. I play Pookie Loves. <laughs> and Esme has the power of being great in bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. You call me bad about... And you call me bad about... For Twilight's how else can how else can you translate the passionate thing? Come on! Just grab them in the biscuit. Uh, <laughs> oh man. So yes, this is what we have to deal with, viewers. And this week we are getting into chapter fifteen. <laughs> them. <laughs> Wow, we don't have really started yet. What the fuck is making me do? <laughs> we haven't even started yet, and Gale's already broken. I mean, what the hell? Seems like part for the course for me. The muted light of yet another cloudy day eventually woke me. I lay with my arm across my eyes, groggy and dazed. Something, a dream trying to be remembered, struggled to break into my consciousness. Oh no, that wasn't a dream, you just left the stove on. While you were in bed. Really, it's a miracle the house didn't explode. It's a miracle you didn't get choked up And the huge. smell of smoke. 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 Smoke! <laughs> uh, I moaned and rolled on my side, hoping more sleep would come. And then the previous day floated back into my awareness. Oh my oh! god! Wait! What's, what? Was this foreshadowing Breaking Dawn? The fourth uh, book, foreshadowing the fourth book when they're when we're only like just over halfway through the first. Is this foreshadowing Breaking Dawn? I don't know. I just want to remind you, Wendy, that this stream is both run by and viewed by people who have n who have no direct experience with this book series. God help us. Wait a minute. I understand now. This wasn't referencing Breaking Dawn. This was referencing Fifty Shades of Grey. No! Ah. <sighs> you. Take a drink. A drink of what? <clears throat> oh, I sat up so fast it made my head spin. Your hair looks like a haystack, but I like it. His unruffled voice came from the rocking chair in the corner. This guy's not really good at the whole not being creepy thing. Edward, you stayed! I rejoiced and thoughtlessly threw myself across the room into his lap. Yes! In the instant that my thoughts caught up with my actions, I froze, shocked by my own uncontrolled enthusiasm. That, that actually is kind of surprising. 
I stared up at him, afraid that I had crossed the wrong line. But he left. Wait, 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 Bella, Bella. You cross the wrong line? He's the one stalking you! Yeah, and she's okay with it. <sighs> Our heroes, ladies and gentlemen. I still need to add that to the soundboard. Of course, he answered, startled, but seemingly pleased by my reaction. His hands rode my back. I laid my head... Indeed. I laid my head cautiously against his shoulder, breathing in the smell of his skin. You have lovely skin. I can't Ugh. wait to... I can't <sighs> wait to wear it. Ah, <sighs> old people smell. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna laugh all this time. That smell that she was so intoxicated by is the scent of Ben Gay. Oh! <laughs> well, he is old. Mm. I'm sure it was a. I was sure it was a dream. And I'm that creative, he scoffed. Oh, ouch. Stephanie, glass houses. Oh, damn! No, a glass house. I, I need to add the. Here. Damn it! Now I need to add the fucking MLG air horn too. I was about to uh, say you need the air horn. Sigma, Sigma, Sigma. Sigma a glass house is giving you too much credit. And that's a sand house at best. I was gonna go with. I was going to go with particularly fragile paper mache. Why not rice paper? No wait, a gingerbread house. How about it's just rice in a bowl? Shut up! Shut up, the veggie! <laughs> hmm. Oh, hi, bastard brothers. Go away, the veggie. You're in the wrong series. Stop. I know, but they stopped making videos. Oh, well, they haven't. They're just on break. It's been a very long break. How am I supposed to pay for my rice in a bowl habit? It's not a habit, Leonardo. It's an addiction. There's more food out there, Leonardo. Ah, I'm sorry, I don't speak English. What are you speaking right now? Rice in a bowl? <laughs> There's, this is no country for old men, Da Vinci. Go away. No country for rice in a bowl. SHUT UP! Oh my god. I, I, anyway. I need, I, now I'm gonna need to just add that little, like, portrait of Leonardo da Vinci at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Next week. <laughs> Alright, uh, I gotta be right back. I gotta go check the dogs, and I'm probably gonna start playing some Family Feud on my end. <laughs> Naked Grandma! Naked, oh, huh? <laughs> uh. <sighs> Charlie, I remembered, thoughtlessly jumping up again and heading to the door. He left an hour ago, after reattaching your battery cables, I might add. I have to admit I was disappointed. Is that really all it would take to stop you if you were determined to go? I, del I deliberated where I stood, wanting to return him bat to him badly. But, but I'm afraid I <laughs> but afraid I might have morning breath. That's what you're concerned about? That's what you're concerned about, not the fact that you literally spent the night in bed with a vampire! A vampire who's stalking you. And somehow you're not dead. I am disappointed. You're not usually confused in the morning, he noted. Somehow still creepy. He held his arms open for me to return. A nearly irresistible invitation. I Making this even creepier! Yep. I need another human minute, I admitted. As opposed to a monkey minute? Or a kangaroo minute? If you're if you're if you're just if you're making the distinction between human minute and vampire minute, vampires can still keep time. I'm sure I'm sure you have a clock in your room. He can he can keep time just fine. Like I'm fully aware that's not what they mean here, but this is stupid. Yeah. I'll wait. I skipped to the bathroom, my emotions unrecognizable. 
Skip to the bathroom. <laughs> I skipped to the bathroom. And here I thought Aaron Hansen was the only person who did that. Seriously, that's a man who... That's a man who has who, who garners an unbelievable amount of enjoyment from the art from the act of pooping. Yeah, see, I I remember, see, I remember showing Ifrit the 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 skipper video that I that I found. I don't think I showed you the skipper video. Oh, viewers, we're in for a treat, aren't we? <laughs> Send it on over. Yeah, it's like I I need to I need to look it up again though. Wah, wah. All, all I can picture is... Y'all remember the Grim Adventures of B Billy and Mandy, right? Now, me, I hated that show. I thought it was really just kind of dumb and repetitive. and I, I, I personally kind of blame it for such Cartoon Network abortions as uh, The Misadventures of Flapjack or Chowder. Just, you know... Pointlessness and stupidity. Because apparently being stupid is comedy now. Then again, I suppose we have to explain Adam Sandler somehow. Well! Oh. Great. <laughs> Wait, you're offline, but you're still on the call? I, I haven't changed my status to... I haven't changed my my status. I'm on Invis. Okay. <sighs> you are a ninja, it's, so it's only appropriate it's, that you would be invisible. It's it's a force of habit. <laughs> and also, you're a ninja. <laughs> that too. But I am ninja, you are ninja, she is ninja too. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna flip out like that, a ninja. That that, that really isn't that really is an old too. That really is an old reference. Does anybody <laughs> remember Asking Ninja? I remember Asking Ninja. He was on Mythbusters once. That was weird. <laughs> Kinda cool, but weird. I'm gonna flip out like a ninja, and you should flip out too. Having fun over there? <laughs> Seriously though, I can only vamp for so long. You're gonna have to find that link quick. I I I linked it in the in the Discord chat. Ugh, damn it! Streamer mode. Also, you put it in the exclusive chat instead of the general. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Not what I meant to do. You need to copy the video URL and then put it in the thing. Paste and go. Yes, please. Okay, just about... Where is the button? 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 Who's got the button? I've got the button. The button is mine. So this is a thing that you found. Yes. He likes to get attention. Who is that character? He hopes to start a new craze. And he wants to make money. His name is the Skipper, because everywhere he goes, he skips. That sensation is absolutely one of the most extraordinarily joyous sensations that a person will ever experience. Yeah, that looks like a man who skips everywhere he goes. Find about seven, like seven seconds in. <laughs> yeah, I saw it with the boombox. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that definitely looks like a man who skips everywhere he goes. By really. Which I'm does By which skip I mean, everywhere he goes. The 80s. <laughs> yeah, and I think and I'm pretty sure this is from the 80s. Actually, you know what? He kind of looks like. You know what he kind of looks like oh. is. 
he kind of looks like what I would imagine a younger Charlie Swan to look like. So a younger what? Mustache dad. Oh, oh god. So you know that's convenient. And I'm out of drink. Damn. Oh. I miss my ginger ale already. Oh. <sighs> right, well, that was... That was certainly a thing that happened. Yes. And now back to this. Yes. Drink. Stay in school. Drink your this. Uh, the face in the mirror was practically a stranger. Eyes too bright, hectic spots of red across my cheekbones. Oh, come on. It's acne. You're a teenager. <laughs> and I raise my head and stare into the eyes of the stranger. I always know that the mirror never lies. Sure it does. Anyway. after You don't even know what I'm referencing, do you? No, but I've been to a fun house, so I already know it's wrong. After Queen's I... Reich, I have a strange eyes of a stranger. Ah. After I brushed my teeth, I worked to straighten out the tangled chaos that was my hair. I splashed my face with cold water and tried to breathe normally with no notable su with no noticeable success. Is anybody else really bored right now? I'm really bored right now. I half ran back to my room. It seemed like a miracle that he was there, his arms still waiting for me. So what, he spent like five, ten minutes just sitting there with his arms out like a freaking idiot? Or Jesus? An idiot Jesus? Touchdown Jesus! I miss Touchdown Jesus. Five dollar foot long Jesus is an okay substitute, but like, not great. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, it's a Cincinnati thing. And a Haywood Banks thing. Big butter, her Jesus. And so on. Sweet cream, Jesus. Imperial, Jesus. Un no, no, no. Old country, uh, old country fresh, then unsalted. I always get that mixed up! Yes, you do. <sighs> My personal favorite, though, is I can't believe it's not Jesus. Yes! Which is, which, as it happens, is also what I say every time I see Zach's picture. <laughs> or Nash. Yeah, Nash especially. I mean, they're both kind of, well, I mean, one's fat Jesus and the other is... Skitty, beardless Jesus. Punk Jesus. And he has a beard. Punk Jesus! He has a beard. Well... Well, he is grown. Well, well, he, well, he doesn't a... have a mustache, though. No mustache, true, but beard. It's got it's got a bit of the half Jesus going on. <laughs> the G's or the sus, whichever you prefer. Anyway. <clears throat> Derp, derp. Ah, right. It seemed like go. a miracle when he was there, so I, I, he reached out to me and my heart thumped unsteadily. Welcome back, he murmured, taking me into his arms. Take a drink. Damn it. He rocked me for a while in silence and still in, until I noticed that his clothes were changed, his hair smooth. Uh. Okay. This sounds like something I saw in, a, in an expose about gay conversion therapy. Which, you know, what? kind of appropriate, considering this entire thing is creepy as hell! Something tells me I don't want to know. Uh, yeah. Uh, apparently it's a thing in gay conversion therapy where the um, patient, quote-unquote, will sit in the therapist, quote-unquote's lap, and be rocked back and forth. Eh... <laughs> Which I should think would not make you any more straight, but no! would, but would still be, but but is definitely undoubtedly very creepy. 
I need an adult. I am an adult, and I need an adult. Friendly reminder oh, that. I can't. Do, do what? <laughs> do we have a cake? Do we have a cake? No, I said hi, kitty. My oh. my cat just came. My cat just just kitty! popped out of the closet. No kitty, that's gay. <laughs> I am why we can't have nice things. Uh, You missed Wendy's cat being gay. My my cat was sleeping in my closet. I'm out of the closet. I don't like them putting chemicals in the food that turn the friggin' cats gay! You understand that? Leave him alone, he's in the closet. He was in the closet. Leave him alone, he just came out of the closet. <laughs> yeah. God damn, I'm sick of this crap! I'm sick of social engineering, is that funny? You're right, it's hilarious. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, back to this creepy bullshit. Uh. Ah, right. You left? I accused, touching the collar of his fresh shirt. I just left. <laughs> Sorry, John Tron. I could hardly leave in the clothes I came in. I could hardly leave in the clothes I came in. Next. Thanks, train. <sighs> Stupid train. She, she did not proofread this, and she certainly did not give it to a 12 year old to read before publishing. I could hardly leave in the clothes I came in. Oh, shut you, up. You said... You were thinking... You, you were thinking the same thing, too, you stupid train. <laughs> what the heck did he say to you? I heard something different. I'm just gonna keep reading. You were very deeply asleep. I didn't miss anything. His eyes gleamed. The talking came earlier. Just fucking creepy goddamn bullshit. Ah. Uh. I groaned. What did you... Go ahead. What did you hear? His gold eyes grew very soft. I'm trying to make some sort of metallurgy joke because gold is naturally very malleable. But I think the periodic table deserves better. You said you loved me. You know what else she said? No, Satan, that's my yogurt. <laughs> it's time to play Family Feud! Scores are doubled for this round. <clears throat> Scores are doubled for this round. Uh, right, give me Windy and give me Ifrit. Oh, now this is inappropriate. Eh. He was trying to go to the soup store. <laughs> okay, top answers are on the board. <clears throat> Name something that you would not want to do while standing in front of a, a, win a window that your neighbor could see into. <laughs> Ifrit. Naked Grandma! Naked, huh? Show me naked I grandma. <laughs> right, well, that's our top answer. Are you gonna pass? Or are you gonna play? I'm gonna pass. So am I. 
<sighs> I do quite like that show, though. It's a good show. I would be playing with my family, the bums. <laughs> the bums. You knew that already, I reminded him, ducking my head. Josh Jepson? Tim, his wife. <laughs> Uh, a lot of Runaway Guys references tonight. Not that I'm complaining. It was nice to hear, just the same. I hid my face against his, sh his shoulder. Hello, hello. I whispered. You are my life now, he answered simply. <laughs> no, creepy! <sighs> I do not get paid enough for this. You don't get paid at all. That's that's not romantic. That's obsessive. That's my point exactly. If we're oh, I need to set up the Patreon. You're the only you're the only thing in my life, Bella. <laughs> there is nothing more to say for the moment. Most Gee, you... I wonder why. Yeah, kind of. He rocked us back and forth as the room grew lighter. <laughs> this is just so much cringe. Breakfast time, he said, eventually. Well, casually. gee, that doesn't sound creepy coming from a vampire. Yes, I know he's a vegetarian vampire, but that sounds wrong coming out of context. Breakfast time. Show me an F. Ow! Om nom nom. Wow. <laughs> 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 yeah. To prove, I'm sure, that he remembered all my human frailties. Oh no, a desire to- Oh no! <laughs> Cereal and biscuits. Clearly we are such weak beings. Biscuits and gravy. Biscuits and gravy, my heart's nemesis. Hello, bacon, my old friend. I've come to nom on you again. No! Not the oh mouth. my god! The birds! Uh, speaking, oh, of, bacon. speaking of darkness, the curse. <laughs> so I clutched my throat with both hands and stared at him with wide eyes. Shot crossed his face. Kidding, I snickered. And you said I couldn't act. He frowned in disgust. That wasn't funny. I mean, he's not wrong. It was very funny, and you know it. <sighs> Hold on, I just, I just... Guys, vamp for a sec, I need to look something up here. Something that I also need to add to the soundboard, actually. Oh! <clears throat> let's see, let's see... Uh, ha! Thank you, YouTube. This is bad comedy. Okay, apparently you found him pretty quickly. Well, I mean, if you know where to look, it's pretty easy. Uh-huh. Fortunately, the Transformers fandom is more than willing to, you know, oblige. <sighs> Thank you, Galvatron. I ha Gal- Gal- oh, I think I know- I think I know what it is. Well, I should hope so. I just played it. Well, keep in mind, I have the stream muted, so I can't hear it. Did you just tell me I need to just keep that in mind? <laughs> I'm horrible, I know. God damn it. Exactly! But at least I'm willing to admit it. But I examined his gold eyes carefully to make sure I was forgiven. Take a drink! Apparently I was. Shall I rephrase? He asked. Breakfast time for the human. Bella! Here, Bella! Kibbles! Oh. Breakfast with, breakfast with human. <laughs> that's the reason why. I guess the reason why, that's the reason why okay, they call it breakfast. I had, with I, had a bad, I had a bad joke, dare I say, bad comedy going through my head. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut because I, 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 I really don't want to say it. 
Ifrit, I literally just used that line. Oh, this is why I need... What was I supposed to know? This is why I need voice meter. <sighs> oh, oh, okay. He threw me over his stone shoulder. Ow. Gently, but with a swiftness that left me breathless. I, protest I protested as he carried me easily down the stairs, but he ignored me. She can walk, you bastard! Well, no. I mean, sometimes. She, if after she, all, if, if after she, all, walks, all, we she can get away from me. After all, we do have to remember, she's clumsy! Yes. <sighs> and she gets down! And then she trips into the... <laughs> and then she trips, she trips into the boiling water. Oh, if only... Anyway, he sat me right side up on a chair. Well, I'm glad you clarified that he didn't put you in the chair upside down. Yeah, we really didn't need the right side up specific. He, he put me down on the chair sideways. <sighs> the kitchen was bright, happy, seeming to absorb my mood. Okay. What's for breakfast? I asked pleasantly. Chocolate! I was actually gonna go for dinner. <laughs> that threw him for a minute. I love dinner breakfast food! I'm food. going to toast spaghetti! And now we've just gone full on YouTube poop. Hey, go suck a penis, you queer! I for the friend. The princess will marry the bagel. But you're so old. <laughs> Damn it, you beat me so much. <laughs> Which is oddly appropriate, considering. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. What would you like? His marble brow puckered. Puck <laughs> How does a brow pucker? I know I he's. I look, think I know he. Before, and I think we oh, asked that exact no. question. I get it. I get Is it. Is it like a puckered anus? I, I know. I know the answer to this. He's a butthead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I should have seen that coming. Actually. But that that raises a whole other question. Who's the Beavis? Obviously, Jacob. But he's such a fort walker. <laughs> Shut uh, I'm having too much fun. <laughs> I grinned, hopping up. That's all right. I fend for myself pretty well. Watch me hunt. I found a bowl and a box of cereal. Wow. She hunt dog gazero in her natural environment. I could feel his eyes on me as I poured the milk and grabbed a spoon. I set my food on the table and then paused. Can I get you anything? I asked, not wanting to be rude. He rolled his eyes. Just eat, Bella. I sat at the table, watching him as I took a bite. He was gazing at me, studying my every movement. It made me self-conscious. I cleared my mouth to speak, to distract him. What's on the agenda for today? I asked. Hmm... What's on the menu? What is this place? I'm sorry, was that a Lion King one and a half reference? What's on the menu? <laughs> yes, it was. Okay, well. <laughs> I, I, I had to. I have no idea why they thought that was a... Well, I mean, it was basically a feature-length episode of Timon and Pumbaa, so I could totally see why they thought that was a good idea. Whoa! It wasn't as bad as The Lion King 2, I'll give it that. I flinched when I, when I should have scurried. Hmm. Hmm. I watched him frame his answer carefully. What would you say to meeting my family? I gulped. Well, of course you did. You're eating cereal. Are you afraid now? He sounded hopeful. We should do something. Should we do something? We 
we should do something. Should we do something? <sighs> A reference that I'm sure Emmer would have disapproved of. Eh, fuck it. Yes, I admit it. How can I deny it? He could see my eyes. Private eyes, they're watching you. Bringing that back. Again. <laughs> okay. Don't worry, he smirked. I'll protect you. I'm not afraid of them, I explained. I'm afraid they won't like me. Won't they be, well, surprised that you would bring someone like me home to meet them? Stop using ellipses! Wow. That's two Channel Awesome references in very short order. Huh. Oops. Do they, know, do they know that I know about them? Ah, who knows? Ah, but who knows if they know what you know about them knowing? What? What? <laughs> I don't know. I've had too much caffeine, apparently. Oh, they already know everything. They've taken bet. They've taken bets yesterday, you know. He smiled, but his voice was harsh. On whether I bring you back, though, why anyone would bet against Alice, I can't imagine. This is stupid. At any rate, we don't have secrets. Oh, At any rate, we don't have secrets in the family. It's not really feasible with my mind reading and Alice seeing the future and all. That. <sighs> Great formatting there. And Jasper making you feel all warm and fuzzy about spilling your guts. Don't forget that. Oh, oh, and, 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 and your adoptive mother having sex at you until you give an answer. What the fuck is this family even? It's the family feud! <laughs> Great! I grabbed my commentary material, script, and microphone! There is no time! Your microphone is enough! How about a fuck for luck? You've, You've got, got to, to be, be kidding. kidding. <laughs> Squad of Pingus! We're off! I don't get paid enough for this. Although I suppose <laughs> that particular bit is payment in its own right. I'll grab my smart microphone. It won't hurt anyone friendly. So anyway, Twilight. Oh. <clears throat> you paid attention. It's bananas. You paid attention. He smiled approvingly. I've been known to do that every now and then, I grimaced. So, did Alice see me coming? God damn it! <laughs> Just grab him in the biscuit! Out of context <laughs> quote for the night! The second out of context quote for the night, thank you. I forgot about the clothes he came in. Oh, right. How did this book get published? Anyway, his reaction was strange. Something like that, he said uncomfortably, turning away so I couldn't see his eyes. Oh good, he got the joke! I stared at him curiously. Is that any good? He asked, turning back to me abruptly and eyeing my breakfast with a teasing look on his face. Honestly, it doesn't look very appetizing. Well, it's no irritable grizzly, I, mur I murmured. Take a drink! Also, stop trying to eat me! <laughs> ignoring him when he glowered. I was still wondering why he responded that way when I mentioned Alice. I hurried through my cereal, speculating. He stood in the middle of the kitchen, the oh, statue no, of Adonis no. again, staring abstractedly out the back window. Ah! Ew. Then his eyes were back on me, and he smiled his heartbreaking smile. He secret smile. To go with his secret squirrel. That was me. Rock on board. And you should introduce me to your father, too, I think. Yeah, he already knows you, I reminded him. As your boyfriend, I mean. I stared at him with suspicion. 
Why? Isn't that customary? He asked innocently. I don't know, I admitted. Don't get me wrong, I love you, but does that mean I have to meet your father? And now I really want to play Kingdom Hearts. Don't remind me. <sighs> I ended up stopping my most recent run of it just shy of tackling the final area of the game. But I put, part, I put it aside so I can start with, so I, because Breath of the Wild and yes. Persona 5. Also, yes. Those those are also my reasons. <laughs> uh, one of these days, I will get a computer that's powerful enough to actually work with, like, you know, proper video game capture software, and I will actually start streaming games. Which I'm sure will be far less painful for everybody involved than this. But for now, this is about the, uh, the, the best thing we can manage. <sighs> My dating history gave me few reference points to work with. Not that any normal rules of dating applied here. That's not necessary, you know. I don't expect you to... I mean, you don't have to pretend for me. His smile was patient. I'm not pretending. I pushed the remains of my cereal around the edges of the bowl, biting my lip. Take a drink! Are you going to tell Charlie I can't. I'm... Oops. Oh no, we've run out of booze. I'm gonna get alcohol poisoning by the time this is over. Stop it. Are you going to tell Charlie I'm your boyfriend or not? He demanded. Is that what you are? I suppressed my internal cringing at the thought of Edward and Charlie and the word boyfriend all in the same... And the word boyfriend. The word boyfriend. First of all, first of all, first of all, first of all, technically, that shouldn't be italicized, it should be in quotes. Second of all, boyfriend is one word, which you clearly knew, but failed to follow up on in the. How do you fuck up that much in three words? <laughs> Thanks, Kenshiro. All in the same room at the same time. It's a loose interpretation of the word boy, I'll admit. Edward, are you trying to tell us something? He's playing Dream Daddy, Dream Daddy right now, whatever that game was. He's got the hots. He's got the hots for Bella's father. Huh. I don't think that's what he. I mean, that's not what I took from it. But like, okay. I was under the impression that you were something more. Actually, I confess, looking at the table. Well, you're not married yet. Otherwise, this would be a very strange episode of Jerry. <sighs> it already is. Well, I don't yeah. know if we need to give him all the Corey details. He reached across the table to lift my chin with a cold, gentle finger. But he will need some explanation for why I'm around here so much. I don't want Chief Swan getting a restraining order put on me. You know, it's not like you don't deserve it. Stalker. No Seriously. shit! Will you be? I asked, suddenly anxious. Will you really be here? As long as you want me, he assured me. I'll always want you, I warned him. Forever. No, she's sounding creepy. They're all creepy! What the fuck is wrong with this? Every single person involved in this needs to be frickin'... Ugh. Go get some psychiatric help or something. This is... No, shit. Seriously, they all this need to be ridiculous. fucking institutionalized. And this is coming from... And this is coming from a legitimately insane person. Well... Also, uh, in your window number 20, he reached across, across the table to lift my, I on this word, with a cold, yes. gentle finger. <laughs> Ew. Oh my. Why is it cold? You know what now. Because he's dead, you twit! I'm taking it out of context here. 
I'm just waiting for you to realize what I've titled the, the stream tonight. Oh, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> no kitty, that's gay. Stop posing, kitty. Meow. No, kitty, that's my pot pie. No, kitty, that's my, that's a bad kitty. Ma'am, kitty's being a dildo. Well, then I know a certain kitty kitty who's sleeping with mommy tonight. What? <laughs> uh, I'm not the biggest fan of South Park, but every once in a while they do something very silly. <sighs> anyway. He walked slowly around the table, and, pausing a few feet away, he reached out to touch his fingertip to my... Dex! Cheek. His expression was unfathomable. Does that make you sad? I asked. He didn't answer. He stared into my eyes for an immeasurable period of time. Are you finished? He asked. I jumped up. Yes! Get dressed. I'll wait here. Oh, are you sure you don't want to watch? Creep. It was hard to decide what to wear. Oh, here we go with this again. <laughs> I doubted there were any etiquette, bo etiquette books detailing how to dress when your vampire sweetheart takes you home to meet his vampire family. Just wear clown makeup! I mean, I find... I find petticoats and cravats are usually a good way to go in that regard. Just make sure, just make sure to bring a belt. You don't want to be, like, goofy-toofy. Don't you bring my brother into this. What? Goofy, Toofy, pick up your pants! Oh, god damn it! <sighs> it was a relief to think the word to... It was a relief to think the word to myself. I knew I shied away from it intentionally. Uh, vampire or sweetheart? Or family? Vampire. <clears throat> or... Dress. Maybe the word two? Yeah, I'm just being an asshole now. Anyway, I ended up in my only skirt. Good for you. Long, khaki-colored, still casual. I put on the dark blue blouse he'd once complimented. A quick glance in the mirror told me my hair was entirely impossible, so I pulled it back into a ponytail. Nobody cares. Okay, I bounced down the stairs. I'm decent. And by bounced, I can only assume you mean fell. Quick, somebody get that. Be clumsy. Yes, thank you. I was going to recommend either that or the only funny clip I've ever seen from Family Guy, which is Bobby McFerrin falling down the stairs. Anyway. <clears throat> he was waiting at the foot of the stairs, closer than I thought, and I bounded right into him. I mean, we don't even need to say it. Mostly because Wendy already did. He steadied me, holding me a careful distance away for, for a few seconds before suddenly pulling me closer. Wrong again, he murmured in my ear. You are utterly indecent. No one should look so tempting. It's not fair. She's wearing a knee-length skirt, you prude! Oh, no. These are the wrong balloons. Yeah, it's like she's... She said she's wearing a lawn skirt. Like, what the, what the fuck? It's clearly is he, is he, still. Is he trying to compliment her on how well on how well she looks. Like, no, it. It's how still, is dressing? It's, how is dressing like a middle aged librarian fucking indecent? Because it's still showing. It's still showing her calves. That's she's being a fucking charlatan. She needs to cover down to her ankles. We've been Even then, that's still too much. Lives living in an Amish paradise. Heathens! <sighs> Hello again, Weird Al. We're sorry. I forget who did the original version of that song, because I'm not sorry to him. Because he was an asshole who tried to keep Amish Paradise from going live. Yeah, that guy. I think that was Coolio. Let me look. You know, I just realized something crazy. 
I don't give a fuck. Yeah, it was Coolio. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I wasn't complete. Yeah, I wasn't completely sure. Just want to point out, at least in my world, Weird Al is a bigger name than Coolio. Didn't his fame decrease after a while, though? Uh. Coolio. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, I was gonna I say I'm pretty sure so. Weird Al's timeless. I don't even think he ages anymore. Actually, uh, Vinipede put it best. Uh, Gangs of Paradise is actually made by the Kids Bop crew. <laughs> Lol. Four for you. Four for you, Slayer. Four for you. That's what. Actually, that's what I should do. If I ever, if I ever start, if I ever send stuff, I need to sing "Glove and Boots" the entire Kids Bop soundtrack. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they'll make something out of that. And about 27 copies of Cool as Ice on VHS. No, 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 no. You're not sending in them that. You gotta send it on Betamax. Yes! <laughs> uh, anyway, I should probably get back to this. Tempting how? I asked. I, I can change. He sighed, shaking his head. You are so absurd. He pressed his cool lips delicately to my forehead, and the room spun. Uh, I feel like there's a joke to make there, but it's not coming to me, and I think that's probably because this entire book is like taking a jackhammer to most of your brain. The smell of his breath made it impossible to think. Mm, that's good morning breath. There we go. Jesus Christ. Shall, shall I explain how you're tempting me? He said. Oh, please don't. It was clearly a rhetorical question. Oh, thank God. His, finger nice. traced, his fingers traced slowly down my spine, his breath coming more quickly against my skin. Oh, God fucking damn it. Here we go with this again. <laughs> nice. Stop. Uh, Mr. Cullen, Chris Hansen, have a seat. No. I don't like seats. Seats killed my mother. I was expecting you to say they're coarse and irritating and get everywhere. <laughs> uh. No, no, what would happen was, it was he just angst everywhere. All on the floor. Well, yes, also. Next. <sighs> okay. My hands were limp on his... Yeah, fingers! Beach to it. Chest. And I felt lightheaded again. He tilted his head slowly and touched his cool lips to mine for the second time. I hope you mean her face! Very carefully, parting them slightly, and I'm not entirely sure you mean her face anymore. And then I collapsed. I'm definitely not sure you meant her face. Yeah. Give me your face. Bella? His voice was alarmed, and he caught me and held me up. You made me faint. I accused him dizzily. And here we go again. STOP USING ELLIPSES! No. What am I- WHAT AM I GOING TO DO WITH YOU? He groaned in exasperation. Seriously, was that really necessary? <sighs> the italics were not necessary. Take a drink. Yesterday I kiss you and you attack me. Today you pass out on me. I laughed weakly, letting his arm support me while my head spun. So much for being good at everything, he sighed. That's the problem. I was still dizzy. You're too good. Far, far too good. Oh my fucking god, if I have to deal with any more of this saccharine bullshit, I'm gonna end up with diabetes. Diabetes. <sighs> do you feel sick? He asked. Yes! Yes, I do! <laughs> He'd seen me like this before. No, uh, really? Are no, you that, serious? No, that wasn't the same kind of fainting at all. I don't know what happened. I shook my head apologetically. I think I forgot to breathe.
I don't know what I was expecting. I can't take you anywhere like this. I'm fine, I insisted. Your family is going to think I'm insane anyway. What's the difference? He measured my expression for a moment. I'm very partial to that color with your skin, he offered unexpectedly. <sighs> this is just the creepy episode. Well, the 15th creepy episode, let's be honest, but... I... <sighs> I flushed with pleasure and looked away. That's not a compliment. That's... I don't know what that is, but it's definitely not a compliment. Look, I'm trying really hard not to think about what I'm about to do, so... Can we go already? I asked. What are you about to do? Just grab them in the biscuit! Before we do that, um... Yeah, uh... Gail? Uh... Slayer has a question for you. Uh, he wants to know, uh, how can a sandwich make a footprint? What? How can a sandwich make a footprint? I flushed. <laughs> uh, I don't know. How can a sandwich make a footprint? I don't know. I think we're going to be, considering the stream delay, we're probably going to be waiting a while for that punchline. So I'm going to go ahead and just carry on. Okay. Okay. <sighs> uh, bum, 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 bum. Right. And you're worried, not because you're headed to meet a house full of vampires, but because you think those vampires won't approve of you, correct? That's right, I answered immediately, hiding my surprise at his casual use of the word. He shook his head. You're incredible. <sighs> I realized as he drove my truck out of the main part of town that I had no idea where he lived. We passed over the bridge at the Kalawa River? Sure. The road winding northward, the houses flashing past us, get growing farther apart, getting bigger. And then we were past the other houses altogether, driving through Misty Forest. I don't care. I was trying to decide whether to ask or be patient when he turned abruptly onto an unpaved road. It was unmarked, barely visible among the ferns. The forest encroached on both sides, leaving the road ahead only discernible for a few meters as it twisted, serpent-like, around the ancient trees. And then, after a few miles... Okay, seriously... This is a stupid complaint to make, but could you at least keep your measurements consistent? You just swapped between metric and imperial in the course of a, in the course of two sentences. And yes, I realize that's an incredibly stupid gripe to have, but let's be honest, I've already made every other gripe I possibly could. <sighs> And then after a few miles, there was some thinning of the woods, and we were suddenly in a small meadow. Or was it actually a lawn? Comma splice? I... At the very least, that's a run-on sentence. I don't fucking know. Like, you, you guys are seeing this shit, right? Guys? I'm hearing it, but I don't see it. You know, you could probably fix that if you actually had the stream open. No! I can't deal with the stream and a call going at the same time. Uh, Wendy, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, cool. You just had absolutely nothing to say to the stupidity. Good, good show. The gloom of the forest didn't relent, though for there were six primordial cedars that shaded an entire acre with their vast sweep of branches. I'm not sure if primordial is the right... I don't think cedars can grow that... can grow big enough to actually cover that much. Yeah, okay. Like, an acre seems a bit much for six trees. I don't care how old they are. I mean, depends on how big the trees are. 
like, I mean, okay, my grandparents have a pretty big oak out in front of their house, but it certainly is not covering a sixth of an acre. Do you know how big an acre is? Yeah, about a mile, about yeah. Half, half a mile, isn't it? I mean, maybe? I honestly don't know myself. All I know is that my house, which is not a small house, is on a half acre plot of land. Kidding, but yeah. We're on half an acre. There is no way six six trees, even the largest trees I've ever personally seen that aren't the California redwood, could possibly cover like six trees maybe could completely shade out the entirety of the entirety of our property, maybe, but that still leaves half an acre. Whatever. I don't care. We don't even know what an acre... We don't even know how... Like, we at the Analog Kids don't even know how big an acre actually is. I, I don't... I think we can forgive a... I think we can forgive a fictional idiot teenager for not knowing either. That's the one thing I can forgive in this book. I'm still pissed off about the whole BMW M3 convertible. What? It's not a thing. <sighs> okay. Focus, Sigma. <sighs> the trees held their protecting shadow right up to the walls of the house that rose among them, making obsolete the deep porch that wrapped around the first story. I don't know what I had expected, but it definitely wasn't this. The house was timeless, graceful, and probably a hundred years old, and I just do not care. It was painted a soft, faded what? Faded white? Yeah, that's a paint color. That's white! But it's faded. It's custom faded? Yeah, it's custom faded. I, had to, I just made a Bayformers reference. Somebody please shoot me. In the face. Why not? <sighs> it was painted a soft, faded white because... <laughs> Three stories tall, rectangular, and well-proportioned. Well-proportioned? It's a house, not a woman! The I mean, is, the is the house curvaceous? No, it's a rectangle. Then it's thick. I'm not going to discuss the proportions of houses, thank you. The windows and doors were either part of the original structure or a perfect restoration. Who cares? My truck was the only car in sight. I could hear the river close by, hidden in the obscurity of the forest. Wow. No, wait. No, no. I need to Owen Wilson this. Wow. 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 You like it? He smiled. It has a certain charm. He pulled the end of my ponytail and chuckled. What are you, a six-year-old? Ready? Yes, yes, Slayer, a long, thick house. <laughs> Next. Uh, what would we do without Slayer? Ready? He asked, open my, opening my door. Not even a little bit. Let's go. I tried to laugh, but it seemed to get stuck in my throat. I smoothed my hair nervously. You look lovely. He took my hand easily, without thinking about it. I don't know how you'd take somebody's hand difficultly, but okay. We walked through the deep shade up to the porch. I knew he could feel my tension. His thumb rubbed soothing circles into the back of my hand. He opened the door for me. The inside was even more surprising, less predictable than was even more surprising, less predictable, than the exterior. No, that is not how you a positive sentence. No. No, 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 no. No. I've had this discussion already. I'm not going to bother going over it again. If you haven't learned it by now, then I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to fail you for this unit. Come see me in my office later. We'll discuss summer school. Disney. Disney, no. Stop that. No. 
What did Disney do? Disney will pull its movies from Netflix and start its own streaming services. <laughs> oh, they're going to fail? I don't know. They could succeed. But my, gri my gripe is once you start... I, this is what I don't get. Once you start going and making your own service once everyone all these companies start going and making their own services it's only going to cause it's only going to cause them to lose money in the, in the town in the uh, it's going it's going to make their make them lose money in the long run and you know what they can probably this is Dis this is the mouse we're talking about they probably have more than enough to stay afloat even with this stupid idea in place but it sure as hell ain't going to help their profit margins any This is just because not everyone's gonna be able to afford all these different all these different streaming services. Just what the fuck, man? <sighs> oh, Disney! Why are you doing this? This is not a smart. <sighs> anyway. I mean, anyone who has kids will buy Disney streaming services is the thing. Uh, I can almost guarantee that. Mm -hmm. <sighs> anyway, here we go. It was very bright, very open, and very large. This must have originally been several rooms, but the walls had been removed from most of the first floor to create one wide space. Great. It's open concept. Why do I care? I don't. The blacks er, the back, excuse me, south facing wall had been entirely replaced with glass, and beyond the shade of the cedars, the lawn stretched bare to the wide river. A massive curving staircase dominated the west side of the room. The walls, the high beamed ceiling, the wooden floors, and the thick carpets were all varying shades of white. You could say it's fifty shades of white. Yeah. Yeah, Fifty Shades of White, just like the audience for this book. Well, I mean, there's, there's also, I mean, it's not really the case, but yeah, I guess. <sighs> Waiting to greet us, standing just to the left of the door, on a raised portion of the floor, by a spectacular grand piano, were Edward's parents. <sighs> the descriptions in this book border on Tolkien-esque in terms of how tedious they are. And I like Tolkien, so saying that is just... Ugh, it's sickening. Uh, sorry, Sigma, I got a, another interruption. Oh, what now? Uh, today, I'll, it's, a, it's a funny one, don't worry. Uh, today I learned... Conan O'Brien and, and friends dressed like construction workers and started tearing up a street. Conan then called city police to report his crime and then called state police saying college students dressed as policemen were harassing construction workers. Both forces arrived to arrest each other. My brain hurts. Does it for me? Okay. Only thing that's missing is in the background. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. I don't know. Every time I see construction workers these days, that's the first thing that pops into my head. I would blame the Lego movie, but that would imply that I minded. I'm a strange, strange person. Shut up. <sighs> Where was I? Right, the piano. That's probably not going to be Chekhov's piano because, let's face it, Stephanie Meyer doesn't understand the concept. I'd seen Dr. Cohen before, of course, yet I couldn't help but be struck again by his youth, his outrageous perfection. 
and I would wretch at that, but it's Neil Patrick Harris. I can't. At his side was Esme, I assumed, the only one of the family I'd ever seen I'd never seen before. She had the same pale, beautiful features as the rest of them. Something about her heart shaped face, her billows of soft caramel colored hair, reminded me of the ingenues of the uh, silent movie era. You're sixteen Life is sweet Ain't no fucking way Ain't no fucking way you know shit about the silent movie era. I don't care how much of an outcast nerdy shut-in you are, which you really aren't. Or how much of a film buff a teenager is in general. Like... Uh. They may pretend to know something about silent films, but what are the odds that they've actually seen one? Fucking pseudo-intellectual goddamn bullshit. <sighs> she was small, slender, yet less angular, more rounded than the others. Is that a boob joke? I think that might be a boob joke. They were both dressed casually, in light colors that matched the inside of the house. That's some creepy... That That's that's strangely creepy. That's like some, some, some goddamn Hannibal Lecter shit. Everything is white. Even then... Especially them. They smiled in welcome, but made no move to approach us. Trying not to frighten me, I guessed. Carlyle, Esme. Edward's voice broke the short silence. This is Bella. You're very welcome, Bella. Carlyle's step was measured, careful as he approached me. That's not how you say hello, Carlyle. As, as many centuries old as you are, I'd expect to, I would have expected you to learn that by now. You idiot. He raised his hand tentatively, and I stepped forward to shake hands with him. It's nice to see you again, Dr. Cullen. Please, call me Carlyle. Carlyle. I grinned at him, my sudden confidence surprising me. I could feel Edward's relief at my side. Because <sighs> this is what we wanted to read in our trashy romance novel. SMALL TALK! Esme smiled and stepped forward as well, reaching for my hand. Her cold stone grasp was just as I expected. It's very nice to know you, she said sincerely. Biblically? Just grab him in the biscuit. It's just so easy. Thank you. I'm glad to meet you too. And I was. It was like meeting a fairy tale. Snow White in the flesh. <sighs> Stop reminding me of Disney. It just makes me want to play Kingdom Hearts more. It just makes me want to want to watch a better movie. Want to watch a totally different movie. It makes me want to watch Mulan for some reason. Also, I could make so many jokes about how Kristen Stewart was in both Twilight and a Snow White adaptation. <laughs> Wait, what? Was she in Snow White and the Huntsman? I believe we Oh, I, believe oh, I forgot just, about that movie. I'm pretty sure most people have. <laughs> uh, where are Alice and Jasper? Edward asked, but no one answered, as they just appeared at the top of a wide staircase. I mean, I would have I would have assumed they were off um well. Just grab them in the biscuit. Thank you, Humpty. <laughs> but apparently not. Hey Edward! Alice called enthusiastically. She ran down the stairs, a streak of black hair and white skin, coming to a sudden graceful stop in front of me. I love. I'm sorry. I still have I still have a soft spot for Alice. <laughs> I'll be right back. For real though, why isn't she the protagonist of this? Why does this book not focus on her? She's fair. She's far more interesting. I don't know. What's this Twilight we're talking about? Also goddamn adorable. Carlyle and Esme shot warning glances at her, but I liked it. It was natural. For her, anyway. Hi, Bella, Alice said, and she bounced forward to kiss my cheek. Aww. If Carlyle and Esme had looked cautious before, they now looked staggered. 
There was shock in my eyes, too, but I was also very pleased that she seemed to approve of me so entirely. She's like a puppy! <laughs> Actually, she's more like a kitten. I was startled to feel Edward stiffen at my side. I glanced at his face, but his expression was unreasonable. Er, unreadable. But also unreasonable. Let's be honest. You do smell nice. I've never noticed before, she commented to my extreme embarrassment. Okay, everybody in this family's creepy. Good to know. Great. Awesome. No one else seemed to know quite what to say, and then Jasper was there. Suddenly Jasper. Cool. Cool. Great. Awesome. Tall and Leonin. It's just a cheap trick to make weak books look strong. Did you just... You did just. Good job. Yes. Also, Jesus Christ, it's a lion. Get in the car. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion is coming right for us. Run! Oh, <laughs> we move, we move! That was stupid. Good job. <sighs> a feeling of ease spread through me, and I was suddenly comfortable despite where I was. Such as Jasper. Edward stared at Jasper, raising one eyebrow, and I remembered what Jasper what Jasper could do. Hello, Bella, Jasper said. He kept his distance, not offering to shake my hand. But it was impossible to feel awkward near him. Hello, Jasper. I smiled at him shyly and then at the others. It's nice to meet you all. You have a very beautiful home, I added, conventionally. As opposed to adding... Uh... Uh, unconventional. Oh, come on! Don't leave me here alone! God damn it, I hate it when they do this to me. <sighs> I really need to get a partner who will actually stay on for the whole stream with me instead of just walking off to do whatever they need to do at any given time. <sighs> oh, well. I guess this is what happens when you have a life. Lord knows I wouldn't know anything about that. <sighs> let's see, let's see. Uh huh. Duke, 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 duke. Yeah, fuck it. I'll just keep reading. Why the hell not? <sighs> I can think of for several reasons why the hell not, but well, then I wouldn't exactly be doing much now, would I? I actually lost my place as well. Oops. Uh, ah, yes. Thank you, Esme said. We're so glad that you came. Next. She spoke with feeling, and I realized that she thought I was brave. I also realized that Rosalie and Emmett were nowhere to be seen. I remember Edward's too innocent denial when I asked him if the others didn't like me. Carlyle's expression distracted me from this train of thought, though. He was gazing meaningfully at Edward with an intense expression. Uh, Neil Patrick Harris used Lear? Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Edward nod once. Okay. Well, this is where things get creepy, I'm sure. Well, creepier. <clears throat> I looked away, trying to be polite. My eyes wandered again to the beautiful instrument on the platform on the platform by the door. I suddenly remembered my childhood fantasy that, should I ever win a lottery, I would buy a grand piano for my mother. She wasn't really good, she only played for herself on our second-hand upright. But I loved to watch her play. She was happy, absorbed. She seemed like a new, mysterious being to, to me then, someone outside the mom persona I took for granted. She'd put me through lessons, of course, but like most kids, I whined until she let me quit. On one hand, I can totally feel the whole whining about quitting piano. On the other hand, what does this have to do with literally anything? Like, it just takes you completely out of the moment. Why would you even include this entire paragraph of completely unrelated drivel? 
there are other ways to bring focus to the piano. Oy. Do you play? she asked, inclining her head toward the piano. I shook my head. Not at all, but it's so beautiful. Is it yours? No, she laughed. Edward didn't tell you he was musical. Oh, well, of course he is. Of fucking course he is. Jesus Christ, this is ridiculous. Oh, I glared at his suddenly innocent expression with narrowed eyes. I should have known, I guess. How dare you be good at playing the piano? My mother was a piano! Or something like that. Esme raised her delicate eyebrows in confusion. Edward can do everything, right? I explained. Jasper snickered, and Esme gave Edward a reproving look. I hope you haven't been showing off. It's rude, she scolded. Just a bit, he laughed freely. Ugh. Her face softened at the sound, and they shared a brief look that I didn't understand, though Esme's face seemed almost smug. He's been too modest, actually, I corrected. Well, play for her, Esme encouraged. Don't play for her. You just said showing off was rude, he objected. There are exceptions to every rule, she applied. Er, replied. I'd like to hear you play, I volunteered. Oh, God, don't subject us to this. I hate it when people write about the music. I hate it when people write about sound. Because it's very... Well, it's very rarely done right, and let's be honest. It, this is Stephanie Meyer we're talking about. It's not going to be done right. <sighs> it's settled then. As I pushed him toward the piano, he pulled me along, sitting on the bench beside him. He gave me a long, exasperated look before he turned to the keys. And then his fingers flowed swiftly across the ivory, and the room was filled with a composition so complex, so luxuriant, it was impossible to believe only one set of hands played. <sighs> and if you're not... And if this isn't bringing to mind you and Owen was her, congratulations, you have not spent too much time on the internet. <sighs> I felt my chin drop, my mouth open in astonishment, and heard low chuckles behind me at my reaction. Edward looked at me casually, the music still surging around us without a break, and winked. Do you like it? You wrote this? I gasped, understanding. He nodded. It says my favorite. Oh, well, of course he writes it. <laughs> I hate everything about this book, and its characters, and everything. Where the fuck are my co-stars? I need to take this out on somebody. <sighs> Fine, I'll just keep going on my own, I guess. Hop in on the... Jasper the Friendly Toast. Jasper the Friendly Toast Slayer? Jasper the Friendly... Okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fair. <sighs> ha! Kindred spirit. Oh, four for you, sir. You wrote this, said the people who greenlighted this book. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That is... That, that, that's a good, that's a good one. Four for you, sir. Or ma'am. Friend. Four for you, friend. You go, friend. <sighs> I'm feeling extremely insignificant. The music slowed, transforming into something softer, and to my surprise, I detected the melody of his lullaby weaving through the profusion of notes. You inspired this one, he said softly. The music grew unbearably sweet. Diabetes. Seriously, this is like getting diabetes, but, like, from something you don't even like the taste of. This is like licorice-induced diabetes. <sighs> All right, fine. You know what? I, I said it, and I don't deny it. Uh <sighs>
There we go. New title. <sighs> Might as well. Okay. And don't you tell me I'm wrong about that, because nobody likes licorice. Black licorice, sp specifically. Red licorice, on the other hand, is perfectly acceptable, if not downright delicious. I quite like it. But black, rat but black licorice is universally considered a sign of the devil. And if you try to tell me otherwise, you are a heathen and deserve to burn at the stake. <sighs> Streaming alone is hard. <clears throat> I couldn't speak. They like you, you know, he said conversationally, as may especially. I glanced behind me, but the huge room was empty now. Hmm. Great, teleporting white people. That's exactly what we needed. Where did they go? Very subtly giving us some privacy, I suppose. Subtly, huh? Subtly! Huh. I... Pardon me for going all John Tron again, but that's only subtle if you spell subtlety whilst blasting ghost love score in the background. <sighs> yes, all my com all my comedy is derivative of everything else. I, I I'm aware of this. <sighs> this is why it's funnier when I've got the other two to laugh along with me. Okay, I'm back. Oh, thank fuck! I've been running for like the last 15-20 minutes on my own because if it suddenly had to step away. Oh. And guess what I've discovered? What? Ed Edward is a pianist. And yes, I'm sure somebody is going to interpret that as penist. Yes. He's a pretty good penist. Oh, great. You're both back. Wonderful. Great. Thanks for leaving Quite me. Quite on that. I hate my life. <laughs> you just had to say it. Okay. So, what have we learned? We have learned that Edward is, in fact, a pianist and, rather more ridiculously, a composer. He writes his own songs. He wrote a song about Bella! Oh, God. <sighs> Again, and I said this while you guys weren't here, but this is like getting diabetes from something you don't even like the taste of. This is licorice-induced diabetes. Black licorice, not red. Red licorice is all. How do you get diabetes from black licorice? Presumably by hating yourself. Or by really, really liking black licorice, but if you do, then there's something horribly wrong with you already. Funnily enough, um, similarly applicable to people who like Twilight unironically. <sighs> right, where was I? I sighed. They like me. But Rosalie and Emmett... I trailed off, not sure how to express my doubts. He frowned. Don't worry about Rosalie, he said, his eyes wide and persuasive. <sighs> Private eyes, they're watching you. I, pur I pursed my lips skeptically. Emmett? Well, he thinks I'm a lunatic, it's true, but he doesn't have a problem with you. He's trying to reason with Rosalie. What is it that upsets her? I wasn't sure if I wanted to know the answer. He sighed deeply. Rosalie struggles the most with... with whatever we are. It's hard for her to have someone on the outside know the truth. And she's a little jealous. Oh. Oh. Poor supermodel-looking BMW driving Rosalie. She must have such a hard life, what with being completely immortal and f and forever young, and only have to, having to survive off of eating the blood, off of drinking the blood of the living. Poor fucking Rosalie! <sighs> Rosalie is jealous of me? I asked incredulously. Take two drinks because neither of those ita italics were necessarily necessary. 
In fact, take a three, take a third one for the I'm earlier. Because just f fuck everything, including your liver. I try to imagine a universe in which someone as breathtaking as Rosalie would have any possible reason to feel jealous of someone like me. You're human, he shrugged. She wishes, she wishes that she were, too. I'm sorry, am I the only person who's of the opinion that being human sucks? Yes? Okay. I don't really care. <laughs> uh, I couldn't answer. My mouth was full. I mean, it's arguably better than being, say, a mayfly? Or a sheep? Or... Well, or a, a male anglerfish, at the very least. Want to get laid? Okay, that means you're going to become a brainless, overglorified parasite. Good for you. Have fun with that. <sighs> but, like, what's so great about humans? Especially compared to a... Especially when compared to a species that is literally immortal and does not age. Like, seriously? One's real and the other's fictional. No, oh, and you put it that way. <sighs> and you're jealous of... And yet here you are, jealous of the fragile beings that have to poop. Think of it like this. You have to poop? You don't have to poop. You're a vampire. Vampires don't poop. I hope. Think of it like think of it like this. A person immortality sounds good for a, immortality can sound good for a while, but there are if say you're the only immortal person Which is not an issue here. I see what you I mean, don't... but it's not an issue here. She's got an entire fucking family and then some who are in the same boat as her. It's come. It comes down to the point to where your time, your time. There's a time and a place where you think, okay, I've had my time here, <laughs> and I don't know what I can do about that. <laughs> I'm just saying, the whole not pooping thing sounds like a bonus. You're talking. You're talk. I'm sure I'm talking about someone's mental state when it comes to immortality. You're talking about poop, of course. Of course, I'm talking about poop. Have you? Everything is covered in feces. <laughs> Go to the Cullen's house. There's nowhere to take a feces. I know. We uninstall a toilet. <laughs> what? I just installed a toilet. You don't have. Oh, you mean tell me you go in the outhouse? Uh. And for some reason, this reminds me of yet another moment from What the Fuck is Wrong with You last night. Does a bear shit in the woods? No, they shit in the 2008 Subaru Outback. <laughs> well, everybody, not... Slayer, everybody poops except Edward because he is a wiener. Wait, wait, if if a bear has to poop in 2008, uh, what was it again? Subaru Outback. Subaru Outback. Then what happens if they can't find one? I mean, I I guess a, I guess a similar vintage Toyota Camry will do. I don't fucking know. I suppose the only people who live in bear country are Subaru owners anyway. You'd have to be that outdoorsy. <sighs> Anyway, Twilight. Uh, da, 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 da. uh, ah, right. Oh, I muttered, still stunned. Even Jasper, though. That's really my fault, he said. I told you he was the most recent to try our way of life. I warned him to keep his distance. I thought about the reason for that and shuddered. As man Carlyle, I continued quickly to keep him from noticing. Are happy to see me happy. Actually, Esme wouldn't care if you had a third eye and web feet. 
All this time she's been worried about me, afraid that there was something missing from my essential makeup, that I was too young when, Car when Carlisle changed me. She's ecstatic. Every time I touch you, she just about chokes with satisfaction. Oh, honey, you need to go find... Oh, honey, you need to go and find yourself a girlfriend. I want grandchildren. I know I'm about three... I know I'm about a thousand years old, but I want grandchildren. Fuck you, Mom! Esme is an I overbearing Jew. And... I got my own bath! Great, I turned Esme into an overbearing Jewish mom as well as Bella's mom. <laughs> it just keeps happening. And I just know that I'm going to go back into the chat and I'm going to see Mom's worry. If I want to be trailer trash, I'll also be trailer trash. Anyway. Alice seems very... enthusiastic. Alice has her own way of looking at things, he said through tight lips. And you're not going to explain that, are you? No, heaven forbid, that would actually be interesting! Seriously, I like Alice. Why is she not the protagonist here? She's a hell of a lot more interesting than these two milk toasts. <sighs> a moment of wordless communication passed between us. He realized that I knew he was keeping something from me. I realized that he wasn't going to give anything away. Not now. Ah, but, you do, but do you realize that he realizes that you realize his realization? What? So what was Carlyle telling you before? His eyebrows pulled together. You noticed that, did you? I shrugged. Of course. He looked at, <clears throat> he looked at me thoughtfully for a few seconds before answering. He wanted to tell me some news. He didn't know if it was something I would share with you. What, was it the Cubs score? Because that's not real news. I told you about this earlier. Will you? I have to, because I'm going to be a little overbearingly protective of you over the next few days, or weeks, and I wouldn't want you to think I'm naturally a tyrant. Too late! What's wrong? Nothing's wrong, exactly. Alice just sees some visitors coming soon. They know we're here, and they're curious. Oh good, we're finally bringing in the bad guys. It's about fucking time! We're only two-thirds of the goddamn way through the book! At least I assume that's who we're talking about. Yeah, it's like... This it is, yeah, fucking this better is be as late as it's coming in! Yeah, it's like, this is not how you introduce the villains into your story. Like, what the fuck? <sighs> yes, well, they aren't like us, of course, in their hunting habits, I mean. They probably won't come into town at all, but I'm certainly not going to let you out of my sight until they're gone. I shivered. Oh, really? Then why Then why even bring them up? Well, apparently because you didn't want to come across as too much of a tyrant. Again, too late. You've only been watching her sleep. And <sighs> obviously the, and obviously, they would be showing up, otherwise Alice wouldn't have seen them. Well, yes, that's kind of what they're trying to say here. Anyway, I shivered. Finally, a rational response, he murmured. Take a drink. I was beginning to think you had no sense of self-preservation at all. Edward. Dick? You, you don't want me to... You, you don't want me to respond to that. I let that one pass, looking, looking away, my eyes wandering again around the spacious room. He followed my gaze. Not what you expected, is it? He asked, his voice smug. When isn't it? No, I admitted. No coffins, no piled skulls in the corners. I don't even I don't even think we have cobwebs. What a disappointment this must be for you, he continued slightly. Oh come on, leave the cobwebs alone. Says the guy who treats the spiders in his room as pets. Well, I mean I don't feed them or nothing, I just don't usually bother to kill them. I ignored his teasing. It's so light. It's so open. He was more serious when he answered. It's the one place we never have to hide. Aw, poor baby. Let me go find that world's smallest violin song again. Not worth it. The song he was still playing, my song, drifted to an end, the final chord shifting to a more melancholy key. The last note hovered pointedly in the distance. I don't care. 
Thank you, I murmured. Take a drink! I realized that there were tears in my eyes. I dabbed at them, embarrassed. He touched the corner of my eye, trapping one I missed. He lifted his finger, examining the drop of moisture broodingly. Fucking weirdo. Then, so quickly I couldn't be positive that he really did, he put his finger to his mouth to taste it! Mmm, that's good lacrimal <laughs> mm, really excretion. Why? why are you... Um, at least Bella's as confused as we are. I looked at him questioningly, and he gazed back for a long moment before he finally smiled. Do you want to see the rest of the house? No coffins, I verified, the sarcasm in my voice not entirely masking the slight but genuine anxiety I felt. He laughed, taking my hand, leading me away from the piano. No coffins, he promised. We walked up the massive staircase, my hand trailing along the satin-smooth rail. The long hall at the top of the stairs was paneled with a honey-colored wood, the same as the floorboards. Really? Light-colored wood? With a white interior? Like, no. No, you either go full... You, have, you either go whole hog and you paint the wood white, or you go with a dark wood. Honey-colored. Fuck it. Oi. Rosalina. Bees. Bees. Oh, look at the bees. Just keep that man's kind of send up to somebody. Oh, God, don't. The fuck was that? Does this look like the face of mercy? Don't. <laughs> you cannot stop what has already been set in motion. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, hi, Garner Hero's Belt. You were just, just making an inside joke of one of our campaigns, and you had to make a J.K. Tim joke. I wasn't. I wasn't doing. I wasn't. I wasn't doing Garner Belt. I was doing Joseph Joestar. Holy oh, shit! <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> Son of a bitch! Oh no! <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> the English in that show is amazing. I know. <laughs> uh, oh no! <sighs> Rosalie and Emmett's room, Carlisle's office, Alice's room, sex dungeon. Oh wait, wrong book. Don't. Wrong book. Yeah. <laughs> he gestured as he led me past the doors. It would have continued, but I stopped dead at the end of the hall, staring incredulously at the ornament hanging on the wall above my head. What? What? Or ornament. Okay, what is this ornament? Edward chuckled at my bewildered expression, and of course they don't tell us. You can laugh, he said. It is sort of ironic. It's crucifix. My hand... I didn't laugh. My hand raised automatically, one finger extended as if to touch the large wooden cross. Of course. It's dark patina contrasting with the lighter tone of the wall. I didn't touch it, though I was curious if the aged wood would feel as silky as it looked. It's wood! It doesn't feel silky! It's wood! Hold on. It feels silky to him. There we go. Must be very old, I guess. He shrugged. Early 1630s, more or less. You don't spell it out when you're typing a year. You don't... You, you just use the numbers. <laughs> I just... You okay over there? What Are the you hell? kidding me, Amazon? That's ridiculous! What did Amazon do now? The Nintendo Switch console plus Splatoon 2. Guess how much they went for it. Do I want to know? I don't think we want to know. $2,000! Are you fucking Fuck kidding me? off. I am not kidding you. That's almost ten times what you... That's almost ten times the MSRP for the console alone. That's that's Amazon for you when it comes to the Switch. They've overpriced this stuff like crazy. Fuck. Oh. Like how, how much how much is the console usually? I think it's only like two fifty three hundred bucks. 
Okay, so let's let's just go through them real quick. Nintendo Switch with neon blue and neon red Joy Cons, three hundred eighty nine dollars. Nintendo Switch with the gray Joy Cons, three hundred seventy nine dollars. Kind of surprised that's cheaper, seeing as it's the one I can. That's the one that like, nobody can actually find. The Nintendo Switch with the th the thirty two gigabyte Nintendo Switch with a sixty four gigabyte micro USD card. And Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, five hundred and seventy nine dollars. Jesus! Like what the extra, the fuck? like I, I mean, the extra memory is nice, and Breath of the Wild is probably one of the single greatest games ever made. But fucking really? The Nintendo Switch with the neon blue and with the neon blue and red Joy Cons, one hundred twenty eight gig micro SD card, a. Uh, the Joy-Con left and right wireless controllers, five games, and the necessary items for them for the Switch. We're getting into three. Nine hundred and forty dollars. I was expecting it to break a thousand. I'm I know, especially when you compare it to the Splatoon Two the Nintendo Switch console thing. Seriously, who's setting the prices for this shit? I have no idea. This is honestly, you know. I'm going to give you my theory here. It's actually not Amazon's fault directly. I'm pretty sure this is just price gouging on the part of the individual vendors who use Amazon as kind of a marketplace. Yeah, that would explain it. And most of those so-called vendors are just a bunch of fucking scalpers. Like, unless it's being sold directly from Nintendo, it's just... It's going to be ridiculously marked up. And I sincerely hope nobody is stupid or desperate enough to buy from them. No. Because this is... This is wrong, okay? That, that, that's... It's just straight up wrong. It's criminal. Or at least it should be. I mean... Fuck me. We talk about... Like, we talk about all the time price gouging in, like, the medical industry and how expensive just medication that people need to live has gotten in this country. And meanwhile, it's just, it's it's literally with everything now. I mean, I've already found it for cheaper on their, on their other, uh, on their other, uh, 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 like their use section already. Hmm. $20, you know, $270. For the neon blue and red Joy-Con Switch. You know where I got mine? Or rather, where my parents where? got mine? Best Buy. Fucking Best Buy. You know, the place that's actually... You know, the place that's part of the... That's part of the slowly dying market of brick-and-mortar tech stores. You know, the one who's... Well, the one that pretty much has zero bit... That pretty much has zero... Um, competition anymore because they've all basically been, you know, they've all basically it's gone under. Yeah. Circuit City, and all that, all that shit. Like that's Radio all. Radio that, Shack. Yeah, that that's that's basically all gone. Best Buy's the only people left. So you'd ex you'd assume they'd do what GameStop does, which is just monopolize the whole thing. They're still selling the Switch at MSRP. Shit, they sold my mom the very last Switch they had in stock at the time. For market price. They did not, you know, they did not mark it up at all. It was... I'm going to look up actually what the MSRP for the Switch currently is real quick, just, just so I'm right. Like as far as I know, the uh, places around here, either everyone... Okay. I, I Go ahead. Yeah, it's two ninety nine ninety nine. So my mom got it for three hundred dollars on the fucking nose. Didn't have to pay any more than that, because apparently Best Buy, which is desperate to gain, which is desperate to, you know, desperate to scalp as much money from everybody who walks into its doors as possible before it inevitably goes under is giving us a better deal than fucking Amazon.
What the fuck? And, like, the literally the only explanation I can come up for that is that, sure, Best Buy and Amazon are both in very much the same position in that they're, they both effectively have monopolies in their respective markets. The thing is... A, I would... A, I'd argue Amazon doesn't entirely have a monopoly, monopoly. And B, which really just kind of... Although Amazon not having entirely a monopoly, thanks to places like eBay and Newegg and other various okay. marketplace websites, that still somehow managed to survive in spite of the monolith that is Amazon at this point. Somehow, in spite of the fact that they don't have a true monopoly on the market... They still find a reason to act like they do. It's ri it's fucking ridiculous. So you know they're expanding into well, the markets. They're buying out grocery stores now, which is well. It's a case where also they know that they they know that the switch is hard. Switches are hard to come by, so they mark the prices up. Yeah, except again, my mom bought the very last one at Best Buy for sticker price. No, that was Best Buy though. This is Amazon. <laughs> I know, but you'd think that if anybody, if anybody would be more desperate to actually, you know, adhere to the ideas of supply and demand economics, it would be the business that's failing. Okay, so here's, yeah, it's just it's customer demand mostly, like hmm. around my area, for example. Uh, since our since our Walmart closed down, we okay, they back. they never even got advertising for the switch. Uh, much less anything for the Switch itself. Uh, in Stillwater, uh, the only place that actually had Switches was Walmart, and they sold out. They sold out fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whatever ones they didn't get, no, they weren't pre-ordered. GameStop, all of theirs were pre-ordered. Best and our Best Buy never even got them. I'm just saying, our Best Buy somehow not only got them, but also was able to s got them, but was also able to sell them like fair, reasonable merchants of whatever. All I'm really trying to say here is, is that if you're making Best Buy look like the good guy, hell, if you're making there's a problem. If you're making GameStop look like the good guy, because GameStop marks their shit up, yes, they don't mark it up that much. And when they do, it's usually because it comes bundled with some interesting shit. Yeah. Oh, to be fair, I did, I did get pretty decent deals from Best Buy. Not Best Buy, my GameStop a little while ago. Fun the fact, their Tales of Zillia limited edition was cheaper than their standard edition. Hmm. Funny how that works out. That's actually exactly the case with my PS4. My PS4 is not a standard PS4. It's the uh, it's the Uncharted Four special edition. Oh yeah, yeah. So you know, in addition to coming with Uncharted Four, it also came with a special edition paint job. So it's like kind of a light gray blue. Nice. With a sort of black high contrast uh, stencil art sort of thing. Of Nathan Drake. Like printed onto the top of the thing. It's yeah. pretty sick looking. Frighten Monopoly? I think you Frighten Monopoly. <laughs> I try to I try well to I try sir. to get nice typo. I try to get I try to get the go wait what? Well done, sir. Nice typo. Did I really get a typo for that? You tried to type... Oh, damn, damn it! <laughs> uh, damn you, autocorrect! Let's see. Uh, and Slayer's over there singing Eiffel 65. I think that's I'm a... blue. If I was green, I would die. If I was blue, if I was green, I would die. 
I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just um I'm, I'm just gonna just gonna go back to the thing now. Uh, have I? Did I forget to? I did forget to. Okay. Probably help if everybody could see this. <clears throat> yeah. I looked away to, from the cross to stare at him. Why do you keep this here? I wondered. Nostalgia. It belonged to Carlyle's father. He collected antiques, I suggested doubtfully. No, he carved this himself. It hung on the wall above the pulpit in the vicarage where he preached. So, apparently someone already forgot that her... Apparently somebody already forgot that her boyfriend's adoptive father is literally older than the plague. <sighs> wow. I wasn't sure if my face betrayed my shock, but I returned to gazing at the simple ancient cross, just in case. I quickly did the mental math. The cross was over 370 years old. The silence stretched on as I struggled to wrap my mind around the concept of so many years. Ah! Math! Are you alright? He sounded worried. How old is Carlyle? I asked quietly, ignoring his question, still staring up. He just celebrated his 362nd birthday, Edward said. I looked back at him, a million questions in my eyes. The first of which probably being, how the hell do you fit that many candles on a single cake? I mean, they did it with, with uh, Turtle not... and DBZ. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were going to talk about... The... I thought I thought we were going in a different direction with the birthday cake they brought out for Yzma and the Emperor's New Groove. Oh, jeez. The top was literally just a towering inferno. They didn't even know how old she was. Well, I got the fire extinguisher. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Little Mac? Or, what? What am I saying? For whatever reason, I thought that was My Little Pony. No, it's King of the Hill. Yep. Then again, Parkano no Last Dos. Damn it, Big Mac. If you stop, if you don't get, if you don't get away from the land, I'm gonna kick your ass. No, no, no! I'm gonna kick your plot. What? What? No! I'm kicking his ass. Yeah, but he's a pony. I don't care. You should. No. Yes. I saw propane. I'm trying to come up with a horse joke. I got nothing. <sighs> Where was I? Right. Shut up, Dale. He watched me carefully as he spoke. Carlyle was born in London in the 1640s, he believes. Time wasn't marked as accurately then, for the common people anyway. It was just before Cromwell's rule, though. I kept my face composed, aware of his scrutiny as I listened. It was easier if I didn't try to believe. He was the only son of an Anglican pastor. His mother died giving birth to him. His father was an intolerant man as Anglican pastors often are. I reserve the right to be a militant atheist, shut up. <laughs> as the Protestants came into power... As the Protestants came into... Okay, I'm back. As the Protestants came into power, he was enthusiastic in his persecution of Roman Catholics and other religions. Anglicans are not PROTESTANT! Not with that attitude. They technically are? No, they're just not. No, they were arguably proto-Protestant, but Protestantism is technically a completely distinct vein of Christianity. I, the thought, they, I, were... thought, they were an, I thought they were an umbrella term for the groups like the Lutherans and the... Yes! Like the Lutherans. Yes. Yes, they're an umbrella term for, let's see, Lutherans definitely, Baptists maybe, possibly, I'm not sure. Uh, Episcopalians? Yes? No? Again, not overly sure. Puritans? Duh. And a few other... And, and a few other... And I, thought, and I thought the Anglicans also counted because of how Henry VIII broke off. No, because the Anglicans predate Protestants! 
Um, I thought Henry VIII broke off in the 50s. Uh. Left, left the, formed the Church of England, a.k.a. the Anglican Church in the 50s, which was down the Lutherans. One second. Uh, Anglican. 1534. And Lutherans. Oh. 1517, actually. Okay, so it doesn't predate, but it isn't considered Protestant, nevertheless. Primarily because it's just a completely separate kind of setup. Not least which being, Protestants do not have any particular, um, do not have any particular clerical setup of any kind. I should know. I I should know. I grew up in a church that was a derivative of Protestantism. Like, basically the way it works, Protestantism, when it moved to America, eventually kind of gave rise to, ev to the evangelical movement, which is where we get uh, things like Baptists and the Born Again movement and all that. But, um, see... The Church of England functions a lot like Catholicism in that there are there is a certain level of governance uh, there involved. The Archbishop of Canterbury is the most senior cleric, although the supreme governor of the religion itself is actually uh, whoever's the ruling monarch at the time. Uh, there is no such there there is really no such um, there there really is no such hierarchy within Protestantism. So, yeah, it's, um, not a... Ow. <clears throat> anyway, as I was saying, it didn't... It, it is not, um, Protestant in and of itself, but with the exception of Lutheran, it did spawn a lot of, Pro of other Protestant Christian... Protestant veins of Christianity, like the Methodists, uh, the Free Church of England, the Plymouth Brethren, you know, all them sorts. So, yes, we've gone from teaching literature to teaching uh, religious history, which, surprise, Stephanie Meyer also managed to fuck up. <sighs> and it would take an atheist to notice that. Anyway, he also believed very strongly in the reality of evil. He led hunts for witches, werewolves, and vampires. I grew very still at the word, I'm sure he noticed, but he went on without pausing. Oh, for fuck's sake, how has it not... How has the novelty not worn thin for you by now? God. They burned a lot of innocent people. Of course, the real creatures that he sought were not so easy to catch. When the pastor grew old, he placed his obedient son in charge of the raids. At first, Carlyle was a disappointment. He was not quick to accuse, to see demons where they did not exist. But he was persistent and more clever than his father. He actually discovered a coven of true vampires that lived hidden in the sewers of the city. Ew. Only coming out by night to hunt. You see what I mean about the pooping? No. Humans suck! We poop so much that we need to have an entire section of our infrastructure dedicated to it. Which then, if you don't properly maintain it, gets infested with vampires! What kind of bathroom do you have? No comment. You have an outhouse, don't you? The toilet works. Sometimes. Yep, you got an outhouse. You I'm truly kidding. are a redneck. I'm kidding, I have a... I'm kidding. My bathroom is perfectly serviceable. Actually Next, you're gonna tell me you live in a trailer park and your only car is a lawnmower. It's actually. You make fun of my MR2. Well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying your John, Don, John Deere tractor needs some work. Well, you know it's kind of funny because technically most lawnmowers are in fact mid-engined. <laughs> uh, car joke. Okay. Uh, but but uh. 
Sewers, only coming around for night. In those days, when monsters were not just myths and legends, that was the way many lived. When monsters were not just myths and... What are you? He's a vampire. Yes, exactly! I'm pretty sure they're not... I'm pretty sure they're still not just myths and legends by the internal logic of this series. Uh, excuse me? Are you saying that, they, that vampires don't exist, you racist bastard? I'm saying exactly the opposite of that. <sighs> wow, racist. The people gather their, fit, their pitchforks and torches, of course. His brief laugh was darker now. And waited where Carlisle had seen the monsters exit onto, into the street. Eventually, one emerged. His voice was very quiet. I strained to catch the words. He must have been ancient and weak with hunger. Carlisle heard him call out in Latin to the others when he saw, caught the scent of the mob. He ran through the streets, and Carlisle, he was 23 and very fast, was in the lead of the pursuit. The creature could have easily outrun them, but Carlisle thinks he was too hungry, so he turned and attacked. He fell on Carlisle first, but the others were close behind, and he turned to defend himself. He killed two men and made off with a third, leaving Carlisle bleeding in the street. You know, again, this sounds like a far more interesting story than the actual story we're being given. Even if you did get the whole Anglican-Protestant thing completely wrong. He paused. I could sense he was editing something, keeping something from me. Carlyle knew what his father would do. The bodies would be burned. Anything infected by the monster must be destroyed. Carlyle acted instinctively to save his own life. He crawled away from the alley while the mob followed the fiend and his victim. He hid in a cellar, buried himself in rotting potatoes for three days! <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Day three. The potatoes think I've become one of them. <laughs> I have become one with the spud. It was a miracle he was able to keep silent, to stay undiscovered. It was over then, and he realized what he had become. A potato. <laughs> I'm sorry, just... The mental image of Neil Patrick Harris poking his head out of a pile of potatoes is one of the most beautiful things I've ever thought of. A pile of rotten potatoes. Yes. <laughs> Just somebody comes down into the cellar to grab some potatoes. He pops his head out. <laughs> he pops his head out. Uh, I, w I wouldn't bother if I were you. I think most of these have gone south. Pops his head back in. Ow. Mom, there's a man living in the potatoes! And, her mom, and the mom's just like, bloody Irishman. I'm gonna keep reading now. Ah. <sighs> I'm not sure what my face was revealing, but he suddenly broke off. How are you feeling? he asked. I'm fine, I assured him. And, though I bit my lip in hesitation, take a drink! He must have seen the curiosity burning in my eyes. He smiled. I expect you have a few more questions for me. A few. His smile widened over his brilliant teeth. He started back down the hall, pulling me along by the hand. Come on, then, he encouraged. I'll show you. Show her what? The sex dungeon? Oh, gee. Oh, no. Thank God. He's showing us the end of the chapter. Yes. This chapter was nothing but exposition. Clumsy. Inelegant exposition. I mean. I mean. Were you really surprised? Not particularly, but I am disappointed. I mean, this is all, that's all this, this book has been so far. It's been nothing but exposition. And disappointment. Don't forget the disappointment. No, I try to forget the disappointment. I just show. Don't tell. <sighs> that being said, I I am actually quite...
Kindred Spirit says, DISAPPOINTED! I see, I see we're both fans of, uh, of Proton John, then. Uh. Fun fact, the, the movie that came, that the Disappointed one was from, uh, the person just literally just spoke from that script instead of just trying to improv on his own. Because, like, on the, script, on the script, I was supposed to say, uh, like, a, a, uh, a voice of disappointment or whatever it was, and he just shows up, DISAPPOINTED! Uh, this was Uwe Boll, wasn't it? No, I don't think. Uh, I think there was this a little bit. Before and I Uwe and Ball's I time. and I looked ahead. For, and I looked ahead. We got a short chapter for the next one. Oh, that's music to my ears. Mind you, it's not. The it turns out. It turns out to be the most plot heavy of the of the of the story. In B four, because we now know the bad guys are finally showing up. I'm still really hoping that we get to see the Vulturi in this book because I just want an excuse to do Spoonie's ridiculously gay Vulturi voice. Oh my. Oh my. Oh! <laughs> oh god, yes! The movie Vulturi's reaction to the kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what I is don't... this? Is this uh, a little babe? Yes. <laughs> oh! I had totally yeah. forgotten about that. <laughs> oh oh my God. yes. We are, if and when we ever, if and when we ever get to the point where the Vulturi actually come up in the book, we are gonna have so much fun. I don't think the Vulturi show up in the first book, unfortunately. I think they show. I think they show up in New Moon, don't they? Yeah, I don't think they show up until New Moon. Well, shit, we might actually keep going with this after the first one, then. Yay. Of course, if we do, I'm totally changing the uh, the main screen from the toilet thing to a picture of Moon Moon. Damn it, Moon Moon. Who invited Moon Moon? Hmm. Don't do it, Moon Moon. Don't do it. Slayer brings up the possibility, since the next chapter is short, do you think we could cover that in this episode? Unfortunately, uh, we are coming up at about the midnight mark, and that's kind of more or less when I like to sort of call these things off so the stream doesn't go too long. Yeah. Because, I mean, Maybe we'll we try to do two chapters hit, next time? We just hit the three-hour mark, like, exactly. So... We'll save that for next time, and if it turns out to be so short that I can't fill, like, a full two and a half, three hours with it, uh, we'll just do something else silly afterward. I don't know. A Q&A, maybe? Or, like, play some games? Invite the chat? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, we'll just have to see how long the next chapter takes us in the next stream. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Uh... But yeah, if it does run over, we we might like play Jackbox and invite you guys to come in. Cuz, you know, that could be a good time. And it'll be very interesting to see what the heck Slayer does in it. And it'll I I I'm actually very look I actually I'm both looking forward to and dreading the idea of Slayer playing Quiplash with us. Hey, well, Sounds like Slayer's open to it. Awesome. Um, in that case, that is definitely something we'll keep in mind for next week, but just bear in mind, it's only a definite maybe. Like, depending on how much or how little we end up actually uh, doing, you know, getting and done. And it also depends on who's here. Yeah, because if it only takes us like an hour or... If it only takes us an hour or two to get through the chapter, we'll absolutely do it. And, you know, if, if we do do it at all, we need to have at least a couple people here. And if it absolutely needs to be one of those people, because he's the only one with a copy of Jackbox. Hmm. I mean, if all else fails, you guys can play Cards Against Humanity. There is that, and that's 
also, yes. that, that, that's also very much a possibility. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out when we get to that point, if we get to that point. But from now on, assume that after we've done the news and after we've done the reading, that if we still have time left... Yeah, I had the feeling CDI Link was him. But if we if we do still have time left after the reading, we will absolutely do something silly, and we will absolutely involve our audience. Because... That's just fun shit. <laughs> so, uh, yes, that's absolutely what we're going to be looking forward to then. Uh, I don't think we really have much else to say about that chapter because all that really happened was that we were able to confirm that, yes, everybody in this, in this book is, in fact, a fucking creep, except Atlas, who was adorable. Seriously, they all need psychiatric help. Except, except for the except for what's his face and Bell's father. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure which what's his face you're referring to. The person you just said. I can't remember her name. Uh, her name. Alice. Oh, you talk. You talking about? I'm sorry, but she's so cute. Wendy. And then it turns out yeah. it's <laughs> Okay, over there. Yeah, it's like you—you you just kind of interrupted me when I was asking my question. Sorry. <laughs> I was just asking if you—you you talking about Bella's dad? Mustache dad, yes. Mustache, yes, mustache, mustache dad. We can keep mustache dad. He's a good mustache. We can keep mustache he's the, he's, dad. He's, he's really mustache. The... On that note, yeah. I do want to remind everybody that we do, in fact, have an out of context Tumblr blog. That's uh, linked in the doobly-doo down below if you want to go there and uh, submit any of the weird shit that you heard on tonight's stream just to sort of immortalize it in print for all eternity. That is absolutely a thing you can do. <sighs> right, well, since I've already delivered that part of the spiel, I might as well deliver the rest. Yes, indeed. Down in, If you like what you heard, then down in the doobly-doo, you can find links to our various social media websites, and you can keep up with what we're doing, both involving these streams and outside of them. Apart from that, you can always keep your eyes glued to this channel, where we, of course, do run these streams every Tuesday night at 9 Eastern. Thank you guys very much for listening, and have a good night. End of line. Bye-bye!